Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. So many battles waged over the years. And yet, none of them like this. Are we destined to destroy each other? Or can we change who we are and unite? Is the future truly set? You are now on the inside of what I like to call the circle of trust. We are all connected in the great circle of life. You know something, Bert? I think you and I are going in circles. It feels like we're going in circles. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Because it's a circle. Yeah, we heard about the circle. Yes, we're yeah. familiar with shapes. Hi, this is Chuck. This is Greg. And this is Dan. And we are Talking in Circles, brought to you by the GeekCast Radio Network, the podcast that loves the smell of napalm in the morning. We are here discussing and continuing our badass bracket for round two. Last week, we did our first side of the bracket. This week, we're doing our second side. But before we get to all that, uh, how's the week been going for you guys? Not too bad. Pretty pretty uneventful for me this past weekend. Uh, kind of went into work. It's a good start. You know, I know that sounds exciting, but... <laughs> Did get a lot of work done because there's like no one there on Saturdays, which is awesome. But um, other than that, just some family stuff and nothing really too geeky going on. So, how about yourself, Greg? Did you get bit by but by another radioactive spider? No. After my trip to the to the science museum, I actually got hired by the the military to uh, make this gamma bomb up. But there was somebody out there on the, the, the field, and I, I ran out there, and they decided to bomb anyway. I don't know why they didn't stop it or anything, but I got bombed, and I magically survived the experience. It was weird. I got a little hazy after that, and I kind of blacked out. But I had this <laughs> dream that I like got really big and green. It was the weirdest thing. You, you may want to invest in purple pants. Purple uh, pants? Putting that in purple pants. Stretchy <laughs> purple pants. Okay, stretchy. I yeah. don't think that really yeah. matches any of my outfits, though, Dan. And they rip everywhere except around the crotch. Well, that's good. I, I need a lot of coverage there. Very convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my week has been, well, one I'd like to kind of forget in some ways. On my way to work on Friday, you know, I was stopped at a red light because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. And then I was on, like, the kind of like the middle lane. Well, not really. And there was a turning lane, but the turning lane hadn't started yet. But the guy behind me, or driving up behind me, that didn't bother him at all. He's like, I'm going to make a turning lane, even when it's not there. And he did that, and doing so, he hit my car. He, like, nicked it, uh, hit my mirror, broke that, and then continued to continue to drive and drove right off into the sunset. Not either noticing or not caring, <laughs> just keep going. So <laughs> that was a great deal of fun, and I had to get my mirror replaced. And you wouldn't think a side mirror would be that expensive, but it is. So it's that's probably awesome. about uh, 150. I'm gonna assume. Uh, well, with the labor it also had it also had some dings in, on my fender, so it cost me like over a little over 300 dollars to get everything fixed. Ouch. And yeah, and of course there's a traffic camera, which wasn't working. So <laughs> that's awesome. I'm like, I'm sure if I ran, I ran a red light, it'd be working fine. But yep. Well, didn't you, was, did you get one of those the one time down there? Oh, I've gotten tickets before. It's happened. That uh, you should use the uh, persons of interest machine to find the guy that hit your car. <laughs> <laughs> I like to find him. But, <laughs> but yeah, so that kind of stunk. And it was just on my way to work, and then it was just a big to do about. I was just, ugh. It was really annoying, mostly because the guy just did it and like ran off, which is kind of a douchey bag thing to do. So yeah, that's a jerk move. Screw that guy. So uh, was it kind of scary, like when it when you first like heard it happen and he went by? Like it was one of those things. Was like, what was that noise? Wow, someone got hit. Oh, yeah. I did. Damn it! <laughs> didn't even shake and, uh, the car at all, huh? That awkward it, moment. Yeah, the car didn't shake a great because he really just hit the mirror for the most part. It was weird. The mirror didn't like get torn off. It was still barely on, but the mirror itself on top of the side mirror, like the 
actual reflection part of it fell off. So I had to get it replaced, and it's a different color because they have to now have to go get it painted and stuff. It's just like a stupid jerk. You should have taken the old one and like rubbed it where you hit it with your finger and like licked it, and then you could like you know track down the guy that <laughs> you know hit you. All you yeah. have to do is lick every other mirror in Baltimore. <laughs> That's a goal. I should I should try that. I appreciate it. Where were you where were you then, Chuck? Could have use that knowledge. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a pain in the butt, but I'm glad it's done and over with. So but besides that, besides my mirror adventure and Greg's getting bombed, what you guys have anything else you've been up to in the past week? Greg and I had another little movie date. We also held hands this time. It's a necessity at this point. We held hands in the glow of the exit sign this time, but <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend and I went, and Craig went along with us, and we went to see uh, Nonstop. Yeah, I had, to, I had to share Chuck this time. Yeah. <laughs> sharing is in, caring. I had to sit in the middle, which was, was the best seat, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so you got both hands held. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't, didn't have any hands left for popcorn, though. But um, <laughs> Anyway, we, we did get to see uh, Nonstop, which is uh, the uh, movie starring Liam Neeson. And I'm not sure about Greg, but I was going into this kind of thinking it was going to be like taken on an airplane kind of basically like a pure action movie. And I, I wouldn't even really call it an action movie because it was kind of more of a suspense slash thriller, thriller type yeah. of movie. And but I really, really liked this movie. I mean, it it really held my attention all the way through. I didn't watch, <clears throat> I didn't watch the exit sign this time. <laughs> yeah, it was there was a lot of other stuff to watch. I mean. I absolutely enjoyed the mystery of it, just trying to figure out who on the plane is, like, hacking into his cell phone and stuff, and it kept me guessing, because, I, I mean, I like to try to figure out kind of what's going on in the movie, I think everybody does, I and do. I kept changing my guess as the movie went along, and I guess that's kind of what you want, you know, like, it, it really, like, keeps you kind of off guard, and, like, you're not really sure who's behind it. There's a lot of things... In this that I was happy with, I think just the way like the passengers were acting, I thought it was very appropriate for like what was happening. There was a group of guys trying to meet up and formulate this plan to stop Liam Neeson, who they thought was the hijacker for most of it. And I got the feeling that that's really how it would go down, you know, especially the stuff since like 9-11. There's more of like a heightened sense of duty and security and stuff like that. And, uh, in this movie, you had like an NYPD officer who was on the plane, and he was kind of getting really suspicious of what Liam Neeson's character was doing. It really conve conveyed that cop mentality. He's looking to protect these people from something that didn't feel right. I thought his character was like, it's really minor, but I thought it was like a great little twist to have in there. And the whole thing just seemed really realistic to me. I guess the steps that Neeson's character was taking to figure out the real perpetrator the reactions of, like, the crew and stuff, uh, even, like, the news coverage streaming on the plane, like, you know how, like, CNN gets a hold of a story, immediately it's, like, all over TV and internet and everything, and uh, it, it just felt really very real. I could sort of feel his sense of peril in the movie, too, like, in the stress and tension that was mounting out of him as things progressed. I was actually trying to, like, get inside of his head the whole time. I kept wondering, like, how can you stay cool in a situation like this when it's it's kind of become personal. I don't I don't think he was for the most part, but like like there was some parts in there he was like what the hell do I do? Right. And I'm just thinking like how do you fall back on your training and just rely on your intelligence and like still get the job done? I thought that was like a really cool aspect of it. I do have kind of questions. I saw it. I don't think I liked it as much as you guys did. You uh, have how did a you horrible taste, Dan? Horrible I know. taste. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where'd you get that line from? I have no uh, idea. <laughs> I don't know. It came to me. It was weird. Oh, deja vu. I, I guess my own question would be for you guys. How did you feel about, you know, there was a mystery there, of course, and not giving any specific spoilers. How did you feel about the answer to that mystery? Were you satisfied? Did you did you have any issues with it at all? So I, I, was, yeah. I was also guessing the entire time, too. And the fact that it went back to somebody that he's already had once and um, the one scene where he actually kind of builds a bond with this character, because how do I explain this without uh, giving spoilers away? That uh, 
the the person does something for Liam Neeson's character where it they could have taken completely over the situation. I'm explaining this horribly, but uh, <laughs> basically, uh, the person that you're kind of almost thinking might have. And I, I'm right? also not explaining right? it. Right? Well. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> it's Basically, not just it, me. It, it's it, someone it you would suspect in the beginning, and then they kind of take you away from that. And, like, I don't know. It it goes through a lot of different people. It comes back to yeah, people. They, they keep dangling stuff in your face and taking it away and putting it back in your face. Yeah, and it, it ended up being kind of, I think, someone that you suspected early on in the movie, but then it takes you away from it. And but it does that a couple times, so it's really you're really not giving anything away here, like by saying this, because you go into this thing and still be totally surprised. So yeah, I, mean, I guess the only issue I had was I felt like the motivations behind it all seemed a little sketchy and underdeveloped were my major issues. But but it sounds like I'm, I'm in the minority here because well, Greg, Greg, you liked it as well. Yeah, I liked. I guess I could see what you're going at with that, but I, I didn't mind that as much because they did keep me guessing the entire time, and I guess that's kind of what I was looking for, and I think that's what they were trying to give us in the movie. So I could kind of, I could kind of let them get away with that. But uh, my least favorite thing in that movie, my my pretty much probably my only complaint is the the part where they did try and give you a little bit of action. I thought it came off a, a little hokey and gimmicky. They they drop the level of the plane, and then the gun kind of floats up into the air into his hand, right where he needs it. And yeah, that was a little that was like a bit of a stretch, but yeah, that was my only really um, big complaint about the entire thing. I, I didn't really have a problem with the motivation behind what they were doing because I mean I, I see what you're saying, Dan. It was a little bit. A little bit lacking, so to speak, so to speak, but um, I think it's kind of realistic in that way because a, a lot of those type of actions, like people really have stupid reasons and like they don't make sense to the rest of us. So I thought that kind of, you know, reflected things that happen in real life to a degree. So. Yeah, I, I guess I could I could see that. I do agree there was a good suspense there, and I did really like how it started to develop its mystery and. Just even like the production of it with the taxing and how it handled that, it reminded me a lot of Sherlock and how it handles the taxing with it on the screen. And so it was able to, it, like you said, keep you guessing with different red herrings here and there. So I have a question for you, Dan. What, what happens sure. if they kind of, if they left the mystery going at the end, they didn't give you a reason or they didn't really give you the people at the end? Do you think that would have been... Um a better ending like what what would you do to make it a, a more satisfying um movie for you at the, at the end there well there you go well that's that's a question and a half well i mean i wouldn't be against them not solving having some certain things up in the air i'm never really against that you know, there's a lot of movies that, that tend to do that i don't know like what i would do specifically to make it a better movie i think if anything it would be I felt like it wrote itself into a corner and it didn't know how to get out of it with the characters, I guess. The motivations behind it didn't seem like they were, they fit with the actions of the characters. Like, I mean, for the one character it did, he did seem like he had a lack of, uh, he, he was loose on his reality and sanity was leaving him, but the other one, a little bit more questionable. So I, I guess if you were to further explain that or I guess give a more defined, what they, define more so what they want to get out of it because that was my thing like i didn't understand if this plan went into flourishion what was then the end game like what was what would that give them and that was the one thing i had i was questioning what, what would the takeaway be at the end if the plan went through the way they wanted it to i i think like i know the one guy he pretty much planned on not getting off the plane like he was planning on pretty much dying with it yeah 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 and i i guess my, my with that though is if this went down the way they think it like the way they try to plan it or the guy tried to plan it or the girl or whatever like what you know what then would that lead to like what, what what would happen i didn't understand that if it worked out the way they wanted it to in that universe what would then be the repercussions of it i mean i guess well, if, I can't, it, if I, it worked out if it worked out the way they wanted to it would have ruined the name of liam neeson's character and which was kind of the revenge that they wanted for his failing a 9-11 or whatever yeah, and I get that for the one character, but for certain other characters, it was just like, I don't know. 
but I mean, it was fine. Like I, I didn't hate it. I just, I was just a little bit let down with where they went with it. I, I, I felt if you connect the dots a little bit more, if you look at the different twists and turns and you try to put them together, there are ones that don't work as well, uh, that specifically with the other uh, agent who's on board and some of the decisions he makes that make you question his, where he, his head's at. And then, uh, and it's hard to say that without getting away, but how his belongings play into, play into, play into the story. I'm just like, well, then if that happened, then, then why, like, why did he not notice that in, in the bag? And I just, I don't know. And to me, like, what's if in the were... box, man? What's in the box? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Kevin Spacey's head. So. <laughs> But I don't know if you have seen it out there, have seen Not Stop. I'd be curious to hear what other people think of it. If you enjoyed it, if you mentioned Chuck and Greg did, if you had any issues or or, or what have you. But uh, you guys have anything else to say regarding Not Stop before we move on? No, that's about it. I'm good. All right. The one thing I did get to see, and I know you and uh, Chuck and Greg, you both had a chance, was the new, uh, and I think the last X Men Days of Future Past trailer. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. This is, I think, the the second real tra- trailer that we've gotten, and it's expanded upon, you know, what what we ex- expected even more. I mean, certain things are dropped. We can tell that Wolverine is going into the past. It does seem that most of it may be focused in the past uh, with Michael Fassbender and Xavier with something going on, some trying to stop the future in some way. But I'm interested to hear if you guys what you guys thought of the trailer and if you're more excited, less excited for the movie. Uh, Greg, what did you think? I'm equally as excited as I was before. I think I kind of have been going in with kind of a high excitement level, but just the the look I got off this trailer, uh, I, I think it's going to be a little bit more epic than I thought it was, and I have a feeling it's going to be a lot longer than I, I thought it's going to be, because it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on in there a lot of stuff to to fit into one movie, I I think. Just how many different landscapes they seem to be in, uh, different venues that they're at and everything. By the way, do we have to have a football stadium now collapse in every <laughs> superhero movie? Um, and and my, my last thing is uh, Jennifer Lawrence looks really good in the the fatigues, but she looks she looks good in anything so. I just wanted to I couldn't even in. see her in the fatigue. I, she was hard to spot. Uh, well, she, she was walking away from a, a plane, and she was at somebody else, and then she switched over into her uh, Jennifer Lawrence, not blue look. Interesting. Chuck, what did you think of the trailer? I, I thought it was awesome. I really liked it. I think I liked it even better than the first trailer, and I think I'm more pumped now than I was before. But I think that's only because... I've just been so hungry to get little tidbits from this movie. It's hungry th- like the wolf. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get singing in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, it just had me pumped, like just seeing this new footage. Honestly, and I, I know Greg mentioned this too the other day, and it kind of shows a little more than you would want, I think, in in some ways. The more I thought about it, the more I kind of came to that realization, but. There's a lot of great new footage. There's, in particular, I love the opening sequence, you know, where you see this image of the future and there's battle ravaged buildings. And you hear a great little monologue by uh, Patrick Stewart Xavier saying, like, you know, of all the battles over the years, none were like this. Are we destined to destroy each other or can we change who we are and unite? This is what the X Men story is about. Like, it's such a reflection of our society through the years about minorities not being accepted by others and something that's held up well through the years, which is actually kind of sad if you think about it, but it's relatable for so many people throughout the world. And it's what makes it such an interesting story and why they have so many fans. And I'm really interested to see where they go with that and like what new twists they put on this story. But the biggest part of this for me was just the geeky side of it, where you see in the trailer, you have stuff like Iceman's Ice Slide from the comics, which finally makes its appearance. I know some people have been waiting that for, for a while. They have some cool work with uh, Blink's teleportation portals. I think that could be a really cool 
a really underrated part of the movie if they do that the right way. Finally seeing more of Colossus in his armored form too, like that's something I've been waiting for for a while and something that X-Men 3 kind of, I guess, left something to be desired with that. <laughs> One they, of the few they, things. Yeah. They did a little bit of it, you know, but not really what you wanted to see. And uh, Not as much as, not as, then, much as you I wanted, guess, Jeff. Yeah, true. And then lastly, I guess the shot with all the Sentinels flying through the air. I mean, that's something that, like, I've been waiting for in an X-Men movie since the get-go. Like, I'm a huge fan of the Sentinels, and that's a big part of this movie that I'm really looking forward to. But do I mean, you, you think they kind foot... of spoil that now in a trailer instead of building that up for the movie where you, it, you could probably get more of a, an awe factor in there doing it in the movie instead of on a commercial? No, I don't think so. I think I think the just that shot with showing like I don't know how many there are, but like, like it looks like there's hundreds of them just coming down. I think that creates more questions than anything, and you're like, it just looks like you said epic. Like it makes the trailer look epic, and you're like, well, how are they going to overcome this? You know, there's just so many of them, like sheer numbers. I mean, you have twenty foot tall mutant hunting robots, and there's hundreds of them. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that. It's just something that I've been waiting for for so long. And a lot of people know it's coming anyway from all the, the photos released and stuff. So I think something like that kind of gets people amped up more. I think it's it's kind of good that they threw that in there. But And then and a lot of people, too, had some issues. I mean, we even talked about it with way back when we did, like, Taking It Too Far regarding the design of the Sentinels and how we had some issues with it. So I think maybe they wanted to kind of show what they look like in action to show, because sometimes it's hard to tell how something looks from like a set photo, but in, in the film, it might actually look better. And within that, that framework, they decided yeah. to go with the destroyer armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a good point. Cause I think maybe some people were questioning the look of them and are they going to be really corny? Are they just going to be like big clinking tin cans and stuff that, don't really pose a threat but i think maybe like you were saying dan they kind of threw them in there to kind of reassure fans a little bit yeah they are kind of badass like they are going to be formidable it's hard for me to get more like you chuck and, and greg it's hard it's hard for me to get more excited when i did my top 30 movies that i'm looking forward to in 2014 this was number one so it's not like i can put it any higher than that like one two and three or something like that <laughs> but i will try part of me is worried and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just being pessimistic, being let down before for certain things. I loved X-Men 2. X-Men 2 was one of my, and still is one of my favorite comic book movies. And then X3 came out, and it did not live up to what I hoped for. And I'm kind of worried that will happen again. Uh, with X-Men First Class, I had like zero expectations, and I was blown away by what it gave us. So it's just, I'm worried, not based upon the trailer, just because it's, there's so much <laughs> they, could, they could do wrong. I like what I'm seeing. I do like the fact that it does seem like it's going to focus more on the relationship between Xavier and and uh, Magneto again, because I think that was the best part of First Class. So the fact that that's another key factor, and it seems like it's getting them to agree, which is going to be the, the, the key. I don't know. I love Fassbender as Magneto, maybe even more than Ian McKellen, which might be that, sacrilegious. But. That switchover was pretty cool, too, where they went from, I forget who, if it was from... Uh, McKellen to Fassbender, vice versa, but that was a pretty... Oh, yeah, when he was holding his hands outstretched kind of in front of him. Yeah, that was a yeah. pretty uh, pretty cool switch yeah. over. I think that, like, this storyline that they're doing, like, a, a something in the past and something in the future at the same time, I think it gets gives them a lot of freedom to do stuff in the future that they normally wouldn't do. Like, say, if they want to kill off certain characters or they want to go a certain route on something, they can kind of do that because the goal of it is to go back in time and prevent this future. So I think it'll be interesting some of the stuff that they put out there because of that freedom. But like you said, Dan, it's it's a slippery slope because with so many characters, there's a lot of room for error there. So, you know, like they did an X3. So it is kind of scary. Luckily, we don't have that long to wait. Summer's not that far away, even if it's snowing right now, which is depressing. But can't wait to, can't wait to see it. It's coming up very shortly so we'll of course be talking about it when it finally does come out but uh anything else before we take a break and finally finish and determine who really is the biggest badass i think the summary for that is that we need to be held 
<laughs> while we're waiting for that to come out. Yes, yes. <laughs> I need to go get, get some sort of support group so we can talk about it until it finally comes out. I need my binky <laughs> and my blanket. And they might they might not have, need to have like counseling and like a crisis uh, <laughs> crisis <center>. service. <laughs> yeah, available after the movie debuts, just in case it doesn't live up to expectations that you have a place to go to and you know, you know <laughs> something something to make something to hold you. But all right, so that's pretty much what we have to say about X Men Days of Future Past. Hopefully, it will be coming uh, shorter rather than later. Uh, but we're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we will be deciding it all. Who really is the biggest badass? And again, Greg, it's not Kim Kardashian. Biggest badass, not biggest ass. Well, Her see ass is pretty bad. It is, it is. On the Simplistic Reviews podcast, we talk movies. We talk TV. We talk... Hello, Julie, what the heck are you doing? Trying to make our spots sound more exciting by adding explosions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could have got the point across with sound effects, not the real thing. Car, car. Download the show on iTunes or at simplisticreviews.blogspot.com. I'm sure your insurance company will cover that. No, they won't. No, they probably won't. All right, and welcome back. If you haven't listened last week, then you're a crazy person. Stop what you're doing. Go back and listen. We started our biggest badass bracket inspired by March Madness. And if you did listen, you found out that the winner of that side of the bracket was none other than Thanos. This week, we're looking at the other side of the bracket and trying to determine who will face off against Thanos in the finals. And just a refresher, and as we're determining the biggest badass, this is not who wins in a fight. This is looking at their past history. This is looking at their qualities of badass them really any logic we want to so just because a person can beat up another person doesn't necessarily make them a bigger badass so we'll determine we'll make we'll make our choices and then whoever has the most votes between myself greg and chuck will go on to the next round and like i mentioned last week these are in, in, in sort of uh, seeds so we tried to seed them so that the, the top seeds were the ones we thought had the most chance of winning the bottom seeds with the least chance to make it as fair as possible for this bracket that is unofficial and doesn't mean anything, but to us, it's a lot of fun. And if, I think if you thought that was, sounded dirty, it was meant to sound dirty. And I didn't even know that, so there you go. <laughs> There's a lot of seeding going on. <laughs> there is. There. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it took a couple seconds. <laughs> really? <Grass> seeding. <laughs> but anyways, let's get this the show under the road. Last week we started with Batman and. Who do we start with on the Marvel side that's kind of Batman's equal? Maybe not equal, but just as popular, and that, of course, is Wolverine. And he's going against, though this isn't who would win in a fight, I think I would love to see this fight, because particularly I'm not a big fan of this person. I find him a little bit obnoxious. And uh, Hell's Kitchen's Gordon Ramsay, the, you know, the badass chef, I guess you would say. Interesting enough, Wolverine against Gordon Ramsay. I guess I'll start with you, Greg. Who are you going with? Who is a bigger badass, Wolverine or Hell's Kitchen's own, not Daredevil, but Gordon Ramsay? I like both of them. Uh, I, I, I did watch um, Gordon Ramsay's uh, Hell's Kitchen, both the uh, European version, the British version, and the uh, the American version. He just kind of curses a lot, and he's very uh, he, he's very caring though with his his anger he, he it seems like he cares a lot i'm not sure if that really makes him a, a badass uh so much but but we do see that tend to see those tendencies with wolverine sometimes especially with teenage girls yes i, I don't see gordon ramsay going on on a, a rampage just like and he does and ramsay has knives just he picks them up with his hands Wolverine has knives coming out of his hands. Do they hurt? Uh, every time. Every time, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, my boy, my one of my most favorite uh, characters of uh, Wolverine. All right, Chuck. How about you? Who you're going with? Well, I have. I am a big fan of Wolverine, as I'm a big X Men fan. I've also uh, seen quite a bit of Gordon Ramsay too, uh, watching Hell's Kitchen and. There was another show he did too. I, I see what Greg's saying where he's he is kind of caring, like I guess at the end of the show, but in the beginning 
I he think seems kind of douchey. Though, Chuck. I think it's throughout. I I think it's it's coming from a, a place of caring that he gets that angry. I don't know. From what I've watched, like usually in the beginning, he's kind of douchey. Like he he really like humiliates people and stuff. Well, if you, if you and... really want to see him, I think he's a little bit softer and gentler. I think that's kind of a, a a play up for the American version. Go back and watch the British version of Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. It's on Netflix because I've watched it multiple times. But he, it, it seems like he kind of cares when he's angry. Like he gets so up. He gets so frustrated and angry with these people because they're not. He wants to help them so bad. But sorry for interrupting yeah. you. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Maybe they kind of uh, push him into that since Americans like cursing more than the Brits do. But um, <laughs> I, I will hell. say he's. I will say he's probably the scariest Brit that I know. But I think Wolverine, though he is the heart and soul of the X Men, like you said, Greg the. He's got his own knives. He's got six of them coming out of his hands. I mean, arguably, he could cook six times as fast as uh, Gordon <laughs> Ramsay. So <laughs> I got to go with Wolverine on this one. Yeah. Wolverine made yellow spandex badass. I mean, that's tough to do. I thought you were going uh, a different route with that, Dan. <laughs> sexy? Yes. You think I was going sexy? Yeah. Well, that too. But uh, he made mutton chops badass. He made whatever that haircut he has. Badass. He made Canada badass. He made body Maybe hair one of the greatest badass. accomplishments in history. He made body hair badass. Yeah, I'm sure you appreciate that. Uh, he, 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 and I share same a, a lot of the same uh, qualities. So. Yeah, yeah, very true. So, yeah, there's no doubt here. I and I already wrote him in, anyways, in the bracket. So <laughs> I'm not changing it. Uh, so Wolverine is moving on in a clean sweep. I'm going to start the next one because similar to. Greg, with last week with Brock Samson, this is a character I know Greg and Chuck are not that up on, and that is Jack Bauer from 24. And have to do a lot and of he's convincing. Going up a- <laughs> and he's going up against, he's got a challenge ahead of him, because he's going against Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I'll, I guess I'll have to give the case for Jack Bauer. For, for one, I don't think there's anyone who's had more worse days, eight worse days than that of Jack Bauer. He saved the world multiple times through terrorism acts. He basically has taken on like every country, broken every law in order to save the day at the end. He He's a big fan of torture. He will do whatever he can to get things out of people. The guy has survived that. Literally, his heart has stopped, and he has been able to come back. He's been <laughs> brutally tortured He's been kidnapped by countries, and he still does not stop. He just keeps going. He just never gives up and keeps moving. He's Like I said, he's protected the president. He stopped nuclear attacks from happening. Uh, his, he saved his family, stopped his daughter from being abducted. He's, he's had pretty much every bad thing that could happen to his person. He's taken on his, his bosses, his authority, and, he, and he's won. He has been the other side of the law, but in the end, been proven right. So... He's a guy who doesn't have to play by the rules in order to win. And he's against Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Again, a badass, no doubt. I mean, in real life, in movies, the guy was a Miami Hurricane. He was a professional wrestler. Uh, the dude is, like, jacked up like no tomorrow. The guy is huge. I think he's bigger than, the like, the Hulk in the, in the, in the cartoon. The guy is enormous. But he also made the Tooth Fairy. So, and he also made the game plan. Jack Bauer would not do that. That's beneath Jack <laughs> Bauer. So that's why I'm going with Jack Bauer. But uh, I guess I'll see if I at all convinced you. Uh, Chuck, are you going with Jack Bauer or are you going with Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Well, I, I will say I, I've always kind of wanted to watch 24. I've just never gotten around to it. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're all on Netflix. Actually, for a very short while. So they're taking them off not too long. Not too long. So if you want to check it out, I oh. would say... Do it quickly. Better, I better get now. <laughs> yeah, I you make a pretty convincing argument. He is uh he does sound very badass. I know just from like a little bit I've seen of it like flipping through and just some previews and stuff, I really got the impression that he's like a Brian Mills type character or Jason Bourne kinda all rolled into one, something like that. And also I am I'm a big fan of The Rock, especially that one movie. I believe it's uh Walking Tall. Where he comes back to his how back to his hometown and becomes sheriff and stuff like that. I think that's a great movie. The one with the four by four. Yeah, yeah. Have and you he, seen Walking Tall Two with Kevin Sorbo? 
I have not. I have not. Good choice. Good choice. Well, what's that <laughs> one about? I think I, I heard or saw that one. It's exactly the same thing. Oh, okay. Uh, just with Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> same script, like just read by Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> but actually, Danny kind of stole my argument with uh, The Rock. I think he's he's done some uh, some family movies, and he's kind of like... He's still hanging on to that action persona, but he's doing some more family roles, and I think that kind of takes away from his badassness a little bit. And I think I'm going to have to go with Jack Bauer on this one. Wow, wow. I'm very surprised. Uh, Greg, are you making it a clean sweep, or are you going with Dwayne the, Wa- <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson? I, I like Dwayne Dwayne Johnson. Uh, since he's he's not going to move on anyway, since he's already gotten two votes, I'll I'll, I'll just go with him this time. Fair enough. Fair enough. I feel feel well, like he he warrants a vote. So yeah, I I don't 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 disagree with that at all. Just based on the Brahma Bull tattoo, you got to give him at least one vote. So <laughs> I smell what the rocks cooking, <laughs> and it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, it's wimpies. Uh, <laughs> next up, we we talked about a lot of the different expendables in this tournament: John Claude Van Damme, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rambo. Next up, maybe the the younger expendable, I guess, we have Frank Martin, the infamous character from Transporter, played by Jason Statham, going up against maybe the best name in Hollywood today, Benedict Cumberbatch. Greg, I know you're a big Sherlock fan. I don't know how big of a Star Trek fan you are, but I know you're a Sherlock fan. Who's a bigger badass, Benedict Cumberbatch or... Frank Martin from The Transporter. I, I, I did see Cumberpatch as Con. I thought it, <laughs> he was really good in that. But I think the one thing that made Benedict Cumberpatch really good for this list was the the fact that I believe he was um he was a, a prisoner at one point and I'm not sure if he he was uh, fired upon or he just had a gun at his head. But that that's him surviving that situation coming out alive of that for an actual real life person is, is pretty freaking badass. Um, I think that makes it the fact that it was, uh, happened to somebody that's real counts for more than a, a fictional character. But I, I still like Frank Martin. He's very calm, cool, collected. His car's pretty freaking sweet. He seems to get the ladies a lot, even, even though some of them are kind of scary, like that, that girl with way too many freckles on her face. Oh, the one from Transporter 2? Yeah, I forget which one it is. I haven't seen him in a while, and I really should uh, watch him again, because they were really good. His his voice is pretty freaking badass. Baldish kind of head is freaking badass. The suit is really badass. I, I I just think there's there's just too much going on there for uh, Benedict to, to really handle, even though I, I do really enjoy me some uh, Cumberpatch. All right, so we got one vote for Frank Martin. And I'm actually surprised by that, Greg. I thought you would go with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, but... I know. I, I like his act. I think if it was something other than a, a badass bracket, I, I think he would uh, hold a better chance. Like maybe if it was his version of uh, Sherlock and it wasn't a badass bracket, I, I'd probably bring him up a little bit higher. I think Frank Martin is is more badass. Okay. And, and I, Sorry I, to this one girl that I know. I know she's a big Cumberpatch fan, and she was I kind of was telling her what was going on with the list, and she was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy that you put it on there, but I'm, I'm voting against him. <laughs> I'm gonna, Dream is destroyed. Yeah. Well, you are I, the weakest link. <laughs> I, I'm going to catch some flack for that. I will hopefully try to explain why I think Benedict Cumberbatch is a slight bigger badass than Frank Martin from The Transporter. She'll love you then, Dan. <laughs> I do agree. I love The Transporter films uh, 1, 2, and I, I do enjoy 3 as well. The, the fight scenes in that are pretty phenomenal, how he makes a weapon into pretty much anything. But Benedict Cumberbatch is named Benedict Cumberbatch. That, to me, is just pretty amazing. He's got a voice that is just epic and so emotional. I mean, he played Smog in the Hobbit film, and and you could see why. His face, though, it just looks menacing and evil. and But he can also be very lighthearted and funny. And like Sherlock, he has a smart charm to him. He can, but he can also like be, turn that on a dime and with something like Khan where he's just complete evil. So I think that is pretty badass. He's not necessarily physically a badass, but a mental badass, which is maybe even a little harder to, to protect and a little, a little bit harder to control. So my vote goes for Benedict Cumberbatch. And Chuck, we have one vote in each category. 
Uh, you're the first deciding factor of the night. Who are you going with? The only thing I've pretty much seen Benedict Cumberbatch in is uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. I will say I was very impressed with his with his con. I think he, he played an excellent villain. He, he did really good in that movie. I'm a really big fan of The Transporter, though. I love all those movies. And like Greg said, too, the, the way he keeps his car so immaculate, <laughs> um, just it, that's that's pretty badass to me. And I guess one of the deciding factors for me is um, I think it was in, I want to say the second movie in the beginning when the, all the guys confront him in the parking garage and the, the girl has a gun to his head and he basically doesn't really pay much attention to them. Like he knows they're there, but he keeps doing what he's doing. He's putting his gloves on or whatever he's doing. He's fiddling with his stuff in his car. It just seems so badass to me that he's like, he already knows that he's going to beat them like before the fights even started. So that's something that's always stuck with me. So I'll, uh, I'll go with Frank Martin on this one. All right. Frank Martin is moving on. Next up. Interesting. We talked about Benedict Cumberbatch because I always thought he'd make a great, he would fit this role really well in live action. It may never happen, but I think he has a voice for it. And that is Dr. Doom. And Dr. Doom is going up against Patrick Swayze, Dalton from Roadhouse, the great American classic. Chuck, we ended with you last round. We'll start with you here. Who is a bigger badass, Dr. Doom or Dalton? This this is a pretty tough one. Dalton did some pretty badass things in the Roadhouse movie. If you remember, I think it was towards the end, he actually rips out a guy's throat with his bare hands and spin kicks him into a river. <laughs> um, one, of, one of the most badass moments of the 80s, I think, in my opinion. But the trouble here is, I think, is that he's running up against Dr. Doom. And I guess my argument for Dr. Doom is that he basically is the king of his own country, Latveria. He's like the emperor. So... Just the fact that he has his own country, he has diplomatic immunity um, in other countries and in the U.S. I think it makes him a really big badass, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Doctor Doom here. All right, one vote for Doctor Doom. Greg, who are you going with? Could you do me a favor and put the uh, the scene from uh, Lethal Weapon for when Chuck said uh, diplomatic immunity, and then he gets <laughs> shot down. Into... <laughs> um, I can work on that. <laughs> Thanks. I think Chuck makes a, a good point, an interesting has an interesting tidbit there with the Dalton of the taking a guy's throat out with his bare hands. But the thing that kind of disturbs me with Dalton was that it was like he was practicing yoga or karate or something where he was he was very <laughs> he was very dainty with how he was moving around with his. Uh, he was very sweaty. Yeah, and then wasn't he wearing something a little bit weird in one of those scenes as well? Like I think he had sweatpants on. Was it sweatpants? I thought there was something yeah. else that he he was he was in. But then there could I could be thinking of a different scene. But yeah, plus plus his hair I find a little bit <laughs> not not that badass. Um, it's <laughs> it's very girly hair. He he does get a very very uh, cute uh, uh, lady friend in there. And he's got some badass friends in uh, Sam Elliott. I just think uh, Doctor Doom is really menacing, and he's got a suit of armor on, and that's pretty old school badass, medieval time badass there. And the fact that he knows magic and science, um, he's been to hell and back to try and get his mother. I, I think all that is pretty badass and he's got like an army full of uh, soldiers that look freaking just like him that's pretty badass as well so i'm gonna go with uh dr doom so do two votes dr doom and i'm gonna make it a clean sweep i'll save it sa save some stuff for later rounds but basically dr doom is winces at no one no not even a god he is so eagle maniacal he just thinks he can do anything and he kind of backs it up in a lot of ways like you talked about ruling his own country, he you think about some of the stuff he's been able to pull off, and he's been able to one up beings that are technically maybe more powerful than him, but he outsmarts them, and I think he gets there simply because he he wants something and he gets it, which is pretty badass. So there's there's no doubt in my mind that Doctor Doom should move on, and and he is. So Doctor Doom is going on to the next round. Next up, 
this is a little bit of, it may sound like a mismatch at first, but you'd be surprised where I go with this. And Greg, you might find this character familiar based upon what happened to you earlier this week. Starting off is Hulk, the incredible one himself. How would I even relate to that at all? I don't know. My past, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird that yeah, you would say I, that, Dan. You have the same. You have a similar muscular structure. Oh, do uh, we? Yeah, yeah. All weird. right, my my uh, time at the the gym and working out is uh, paying off. Looks like. Yeah, yeah. Also, would not like you when you're angry. So interesting enough. And he's going up against Sarah Connor from Terminator. Based upon body size, kind of a mismatch. But I ended up last round. I'm going to start with this one. And Hulk is. Enormously powerful Hulk could probably crush puny Sarah Connor in a heartbeat, but I don't think he's a bigger badass. I think badass doesn't always equal power, and sometimes having no power and still being a badass is more incredible. Sarah Connor didn't start as a badass. You can see Terminator 1, she was just a normal person, kind of living her life. But after being chased down by an evil Arnold Schwarzenegger, that'll change a person. So if you see what happens to her in Terminator 2, she becomes an ultimate badass. She's resourceful. She can break it out of prison just with you know, not, not more, much more than a toothpick. And she'll go against a Terminator with you know no superpowers. She has weapon skills. She has she grooms herself into a machine in order to save the universe or save the world. So you got to give her credit for that. In Linnell Hamilton, man, in Terminator 2, I would not want to mess with her. She would take you down and ask no questions. So I'm going Sarah Connor. Hulk, I mean, Greg, I know you're, you're a big Hulk fan. So who are you going with, Hulk or Sarah Connor? Hulk can survive so much freaking damage. He could he heals from it. He could just take the blunt force uh, of an attack. And he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. And I think that's pretty badass. He wears pur- purple stretchy pants to go out in public like that and beat the crap out of people. It's pretty badass. Um, Do you think him and Joker have the same tailor? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't I don't think so. Um, I think Hulk makes his own uh, alterations on his clothes. But And also the fact that he survives the end of the world. He's the only one left uh, in the, the story uh, Hulk the End. I, th- I think that's pretty freaking sweet so i'm gonna go that's with, a good story yes it is it's if you haven't read that I, i'd go check that out it's, it's pretty good so i'm going with with hulk so i can't really defend sarah connor's at all i haven't really seen any of the terminator movies you guys are going to hate me for that but i, I you got so we got terminator and we got predator when you, when you come down we have a lot <laughs> Do you hate Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> no, I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I just don't know why. I've, I've never really seen any more of a re- Terminator, mo- uh, Terminator or Predator movies. I don't know you, why. you more of a Red Heat fan? I haven't seen that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why I haven't seen those, but... All right. I Fair apologize enough. to everybody that's like, why hasn't he seen any of this crap? <laughs> why should we even listen to this jackass? I say that to myself all the time. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we got one vote, Hulk. We got one vote, Sarah Connor. Chuck, you've been the cider factor earlier, and now you're up there again. Who are you going? Who are you push it on to the next round? Oh, boy. Um, You would think this one would be really easy for me, but this is actually pretty hard. I'm making a case for Sarah Connor in my head this whole time. She's kind of – she's really badass in that she, she raised her son, who was pretty much the, the pivotal – catalyst for the whole rebellion and revolution in the future against the against the machines the things that she does to protect him you know while he's growing up um just some really badass stuff there for like dan said for a normal woman at the beginning of the first movie to just take that uh burden upon her and just i guess do so well with it it's really really impressive but you, you have the hulk who like Greg said, the amount of damage he takes, uh, it's kind of reminiscent of Wolverine where he has this healing factor and he can just regenerate from pretty much any kind of, uh, damage, even like a nuclear blast or anything, which, which is why he survives in the end, in that, in that story, um, Hulk the end. But could you argue that that makes him less of a badass since he knows he can't lose? It's like playing with the cheat codes on. Ah, there's there's, yeah, a, kinda... there's always a little bit of uh, of a chance that it, that he won't make it. I think that's been displayed a couple times in the comics. 
Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, this is tough. I honestly could go either way on this. Wow. Chuck's by. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, poof, if I had a dart in my hand, I would just throw a dart at pick one. Like your computer? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then I would need a new computer, but I do have a touch screen, so I guess I could just touch it, like close my eyes and touch it. Holy crap. Uh, I'm going to go Hulk, I guess. Okay. Fair enough. Hulk is moving on. <laughs> this might be the combined oldest battle we had going on. Starting off last week, I talked about we had the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's all in one character. And that, of course, is Clint <laughs> Eastwood. Going up against Stan the Man Lee. <laughs> you have one of the all-time comic book creators against one of the all-time movie makers. Kind of insane battle going on here. Chuck, you ended last round. Let's start with you here. Who is a bigger badass, Clint Eastwood or Stan Lee? Who? Uh, well, Stan Stan has the nickname The Man, which is is pretty badass in and of itself. And uh, considering he created like half the Marvel universe, I think that's pretty impressive feat. You know, a lot of his characters are in this bracket in a way that kind of puts him above them. Clint Eastwood made a lot of great movies in his day, kind of known for some of those spaghetti westerns. He had that that grimacing face and, you know, always chewing on the cigar kind of. And then, you know, even into uh, a little bit of more modern genre when he made the Dirty Harry movies and stuff like that. Probably one of the one of the most famous lines about uh, did I fire five shots or six? Do you feel lucky punk? Do you? Uh, It's a very (laughs) badass line. Unfortunately, I think my I think my heart is going to side with Stan Lee on this one. All right, fair enough, fair enough. And I can see what you're saying there. Stan Lee, what he's done. I mean, think about all the characters we've talked about, and none of them would exist without Stan Lee. I mean, that's pretty badass. Think about all the Marvel movies. They would probably not exist without Stan Lee. And he's still going at at his age. He's still going full full born. That's pretty badass. You ever hear Stan Lee talk, and he's pretty hilarious. He, He just, he takes on that persona. And I think he's a big reason comics survived you know, the, the Comic Court of Authority. He he brought them into a new generation with stuff like Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. He changed the game for sure. There's no doubt there. But when we're talking badass, it's hard to beat Clint Eastwood. He defined what it meant to be badass for a new generation. He def- His character in Good, the Bad, and the Ugly and Hang Him High, when he talked, he talked about spaghetti westerns, how many characters have come after that that have took inspirations from Clint Eastwood. Characters we've already talked about, things like Indiana Jones, you can see Clint Eastwood in some of his uh, mannerisms. You you talk about Dirty Harry. Even later on in things like Gran Torino, Unforgiven, the guy's still making movies, and that's that's pretty badass. And he also likes to yell at empty furniture. So there you go. (laughs) Um, My vote goes for, for Clint Eastwood. Greg, you are the signing factor. Who's going on, Clint Eastwood or Stanley? I, I think I could make this kind of simple. Stanley has is a badass with a certain group of people. I think Clint Eastwood is kind of more known as a universal badass. I think more people would agree about that. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Clint Eastwood, even though I would have loved to see the battle between Hulk and Stanley. Um, but I, I'm going to go with uh, Clint Eastwood. All right, Clint oh, Eastwood. Surprising, Greg. Yeah, I'm Greg. You're full of surprises tonight. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. Clint Eastwood is moving on. So those complaining about bias, maybe not so much. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, no one has complained about bias so far. <laughs> my my head has been complaining about bias. Uh, <laughs> when Should get that checked out, Dan. <laughs> That's what they keep telling me. All those voices. Next up, we talked about 300 last week, so, well, the remake, or the sequel, or sequel to 300, and this man was a big part of the the first one, and a big reason why he got a sequel, and that is Leonidas from 300, going up against Bear Grylls from Man vs. Wild. Greg, you ended last round, so I'll start with you here. Who is a bigger badass, Bear Grylls or Leonidas? So the the fact that Bear Grylls is an actual living person kind of amps up his uh, his badassness of accomplishments. He goes out there and shows people how to survive out in the wild. That's pretty badass. He eats gross things just 
He doesn't have to. He's just demonstrating it for people. Oh yeah, this is fine. He, that's just mind blowing and a badass and disgusting at the same time. And then you've got Leonidas, who's fighting for his people. He's set off kind of against the odds, and uh, but he's smart enough, which is badass, and brave enough, which is badass, to to go for it and do all he can to save his people. I think I'm going to go with uh, Leonidas. Wow, well, one for Leonidas. Uh, it sounded Chuck- like you weren't expecting me to go that way either. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know where you were going to go with that one. I, I thought you were leaning towards Bear, but then you, you slept a Leonidas in there. So, <laughs> Chuck, who are you going with? That's for Bear the real or Le- Leonidas? <laughs> well, I got to agree. There, there are some really great uh, badass things about Leonidas. You know, he had a lot of great, even like one-liners in the 300 movie. You know, tonight we dine in hell. This is Sparta, stuff like that. Just a very charismatic leader was able to motivate his his army a great deal, um, even though it was pretty small. But um, I think Bear Grylls, he he is very badass. He was in the British Special Forces. I think the thing that takes it down a notch for him, to me, is that uh, he's gotten some criticism from his fellow survivor survivor people um in that community. Um, I think Les Stroud, who was in uh, Survivor Man has been one of his big critics. I think when when you're kind of uh, reviewed that way by your peers, it maybe you know, takes a little bit of that badass away. So I think I'm going to go with Leonidas on this one. I'm not going to make it a clean sweep. I am going to go with Bear Grylls. And even if he is getting slack from other people in re- you know, reality TV survivor shows, you got to give him credit for the fact he was in the British Special Forces. He did climb Mount Everest. So those feats in themselves do kind of make him to a badass. And no one can do naked push-ups like Bear Grylls. I, th- so. <laughs> I think the fact that he goes against all those people that are criticizing makes it a little bit more badass. Yeah. So, I'm voting for Bear Grylls in a losing effort, but still. So, Leonidas is moving on. Finally, a, a victory for Leonidas. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, we have John McClane, diehard himself, <laughs> going up against... I guess a United States ambassador and Dennis Rodman. I ended last round. I'll start here. Dennis Rodman. Yeah, that guy is a character, no doubt. Even on the bat, but on the basketball court, he was a pretty big badass. He was part of what three championships in in Chicago. He was a big. He you know, was a re- rebounding champion. The guy was also a professional wrestler. He went to North Korea somehow. The dude is an enigma to say the least. But he's going against John McClane. I don't really think I need to say more than that. So I'm going with John McClane. Chuck, who are you going with? Even though I, I am a pretty big Bulls fan, and I know Dennis Rodman was on a lot of teams, but he he had a, a great run there with the Bulls for a while, winning a few championships. And like you say, he was re- pretty big badass on the floor, having a different hair color every night, just kind of being the the spiritual leader of that team, getting everybody psyched up getting the crowd psyched up you know even kicking the cameraman in the nuts kind of questionable but kind of badass i i do think uh i do think i will side with john mclean here just even in the first diehard movie just uh some of the stunts he was pulling for one man to take on uh that whole that whole crew of uh i think it was hans gruber was his name right you know just like swinging through the window just how he was talking to him on the radio and stuff, it just sticks out in my mind more as a, as a badass type of person. Greg, you going yippee ki motherfucker, or are you going with Dennis Rodman? Uh, <laughs> since he's going to win anyway, I- I'm going with John McClane. I, d- I don't like Dennis Rodman. That's my only really big <laughs> part of... Uh, well, I, I do like John McClane, and I do think he's more badass, but I'm going to reveal my reason of doing is I just don't like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. All right, moving along. This one, this is a character I think has a, a good shot to go far. A huge fan favorite. If you go to any Comic-Con, you know you're going to see someone dressed up as this character. And that is Han Solo. Going up against someone, I don't think you would see someone dress up as this person on purpose at, at Comic-Con. Though I'm sure a lot of people look like him. And... 
That is Tiny Tim, for those unaware. He sang that awfully creepy song, Tiptoes, Through the Window, which you've probably heard in some Tip-toe horror movies. through the tulips <laughs> with me. Uh, Greg, 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 since you seem to love that song, why don't you start us off here? Who is a bigger badass, Han Solo or Tiny Tim? The fact that Tiny Tim is just getting out there and just laying his heart and soul into that song where he does not sound good and probably billions of people have uh, made fun of him over time makes him pretty freaking badass. He's like the hardcore picked on nerd from high school. And he he got up there and he became famous. Everybody is kind of like ragging on him, but he's still around. He, well, I'm not sure if he's still around, living or not. But uh, I think he had a heart attack on stage and and he died actually. Well, that makes him even more badass. Look at that. Um, that's what I heard really anyway. Yeah. But but the fact he he did that, he's he's kind of like um, the ultimate nerd that got picked on, and he's he survived all of that and went out there and and. Did as well as he he did that that makes him pretty badass. And then we have Han Solo, who is beloved in the nerd community. He he's he's like the other aspect of that. He's kind of like the uh, the the loner guy. Yeah, I wouldn't call him a jock, but he he's he's the cool loner guy. And he he got frozen in carbonite. He's out there fighting a war. He's got a big freaking monster furry friend um he's got his badass vehicle do like tiny tim but uh i'm I'm gonna go for han solo chuck what say you you go in tiny tim you go in han solo well coming into this tiny tim wasn't someone that i was really familiar with so i did watch uh, a couple of youtube videos one of which was the tiptoeing through the tulip song it's so creepy Um, right it it was very creepy, and the first thing I thought of like was, wow, he does an awesome Judy Garland impression. <laughs> um, I kind of got the idea that he was picked on a lot too because people were saying that in the comments and stuff, and I, I do feel bad for them for him because of that because he had he honestly had an amazing voice because I watched some other videos where he he would do a deeper voice and uh, he could change between voices really really well. I think he he had like a mastery over his vocal cords that a few people actually do. So I do have a lot of respect for him there. It sounds like you're breaking up with him. <laughs> letting him down easy. Aww. But uh, I, I will have to uh, I think go with Han Solo on this one. He he's just a a very charismatic guy. He's got seems like he always has a plan, you know, in mind. And what can you say? He just knows some maneuvers when he's flying that Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta make it a sweep here. I mean, all due respect to Tiny Tim, Han Solo drives a spaceship called the Millennium Falcon. I mean, can't get more badass than that. So, Han Solo is moving on. He's mi- he's moving listily, uh, listily lazily to the left. He is. He does. <laughs> he does know. No, no. He does know those maneuvers. Next up, we have Daryl Dixon from Walking Dead going up against Hellboy. This is a little bit of a tough matchup. Greg, I think I'm going to start with you here because I know you're a, a big Hellboy fan. I think it's the biggest out of all of us. And I, although I do know you watch Walking Dead. so Even though I'm a little behind with, on it. You're a little, be, you're a little behind, but unlike Kim Kardashian, you're a little behind. <laughs> that, was, that was a stretch. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, so who are you going with? Are you going with Daryl Dixon or are you going with Hellboy? Daryl Dixon is, if you ask me, is just kind of... A more badass motorcycle madman. But the thing with that is, they piss me off, the, the people on motorcycles, the really loud ones, because I'm kind of on a main stretch of road here. And the motorcycles will constantly go by in the summer, and they're extremely loud. For that reason, I'm, I'm going to go against them, but I would like to give my reasons for Hellboy. Hellboy, uh, Daryl Dixon may live in a world that seems hell-like, but um, Hellboy is actually in hell in his uh, current ongoing series. He's got a stone hand. That's pretty freaking badass. He's got horns that he uh, breaks off. He'll trim down. That's pretty badass. He's fighting some of the most 
evil and vile creatures from different fairy tales. Like even he's he's gone up against a tooth fairy, which sounds very innocuous and very sweet, but those are crazy motherfuckers and he kicks ass against them. You can light the man on fire and he will survive. He's resistant to fire and he's even plucked out his own eye, gotten his own eye plucked out of him and he has to to save the world and he has um died on film and and come back from that with a little help from his friends. So I I think all that leads to Hellboy being pretty badass. Plus his name is Hellboy. Hellboy. Yeah. That is a freaking <laughs> badass name. You do make a lot of good points there and I do like Hellboy. I mean, the fact that Hellboy was made into the movie and like Ron Perlman was born to play that role. Like I think his face is just molded for that character. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm, I'm reading the, the Del Toro book, and they, they kind of did a lot of stuff to kind of bring them together, make them an amalgamage. It's 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 not just uh, him looking like Hellboy. There was a lot of work to get like in between, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I, I I could I completely understand that. And I mean, Hellboy with the cigar, the look, he he does look like a gigantic badass, and he pre- he backs it up for sure. But Daryl Dixon. Daryl Dixon became a badass slowly and surely. Yeah, I could see where you're saying he does kind of seem like a like a redneck biker, but he molds into so much more. He, he makes rednecks into something actually interesting and not just racist. <laughs> he becomes like a, a full flesh character in Walking Dead. He becomes almost like a Wolverine type in a way, where he's always kind of protecting the... The, the more innocent he's the one that becomes almost the heart and soul he's that rough around the edges but in deep down he he, he has it sounds like you're describing too. hellboy here as well dan i know but does hellboy have a crossbow uh, mean, he doesn't need one i know but there's something badass <laughs> about a crossbow i don't know what he's got a stone fist i know but it's a crossbow it's a cross <laughs> and he, Hell, I mean, hellboy has huge ass guns and Daryl Dixon gave Norman Reedus a career again. The guy, I mean, that I never thought <laughs> would happen. I, I, I think Hellboy is amazing. I think Hellboy is great. But when Walking Dead has had its stumbles, when Walking Dead has had its issues, like the one character, even more so than Rick, even more so than Michonne at times, one character that has made it watchable and has made almost every action scene better has been, has been Daryl Dixon. And I give a very, very, very slight edge to Dixon. So we got one boy Dixon, we got one vote, vote Hellboy. Chuck, where are you going? Well, this is a tough one. I, I really didn't know which way to go on this one. I kind of enjoyed sitting back and listening to uh, your guys' opinion on this. Well, I think I think Daryl Dixon may be the more interesting character. I, I kind of like Greg, Greg's arguments for Hellboy as far as being the bigger badass. I uh, haven't read much of that or seen much of it i did see the first movie by the way the second one's much better is it yeah, yeah i it do is. agree with that yeah. i may have to check that out actually if you, if you um, want it it's here i still owe you uh a different movie that i i meant to lunch you but uh i haven't yet but yeah i think i think i will choose hellboy in this particular matchup wow. <laughs> and chuck is full of surprises i did not see that come i actually had daryl dixon <laughs> written in already gotta fix that uh and... <laughs> Counting your chickens before they head. No. I did, I did. Uh, man, I was like a Patriots fan. Super <laughs> <low>. <laughs> all right, moving on to the next matchup. Of all the first round matchups, I think this to me personally is the toughest one so far. Uh, it hits me in all the right places. And that is Jason Bourne going up against Robert De Niro. Chuck, you ended last round, so we'll start with you here. Who are you going with? Bourne or De Niro? This is not fair. You're making me go first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. This is probably the toughest one in, in this first round here. Oh my gosh, De Niro's a great actor. He he pretty much every role he's in, he plays a badass, which kind of begs the question: Is he really a badass in real life? Since he does such a great job in all those roles, but then you have the Jason Bourne character, which in all of the movies that he appeared in, like I mentioned before, kind of like a Jack Bauer character. To me, maybe, maybe that's a, a false statement since I haven't watched too much uh, Jack Bauer, but just some really 
badass like fighting moves and uh, the things that he planned out. Boy, this this is awfully tough. You know what? I think I will go De Niro on this one. All right. We got one vote, De Niro. Greg, who are you going with? I don't know who to vote for on this one. I don't even well, think, I think I don't even think I can make it really good a good ar- argument for either of them really. The thing that kind of detracts me from De Niro a little bit is that one movie that he made, I forget the name of it, where he's he has three kids. Uh they're all he's he's an older gentleman at this point when he made this film um and he had the three older kids. Oh, is it Everybody's Fine? Yeah, that one. That one kind of yeah. kills my badassness level for him because that movie just was so depressing and sad. It uh I seriously wish he didn't make that movie, and I, no offense, because I saw it with you guys, but I, I, I wish I didn't go see that, because that was, that was so depressing. I don't think I've seen enough of the Bourne series to, to really make a decision towards Jason Bourne. I'm gonna have to go with De Niro, and I'm gonna have to claim. You know what? I'm gonna go with going to go with Jason Bourne, so this way somebody that actually does know something about this stuff can actually make the decision. So I'm going to leave it up for uh, for Dan, so I'm going to go with Jason Bourne. Fair enough, fair enough. Jason Bourne or Robert De Niro. Wow, Goodfellas is one of my favorite films, but Bourne Ultimatum might be my all-time favorite action movie. We're thinking about badass here. I mean, Jason Bourne, he's a fighting machine, the guy... I talked about when, you know, certain characters making weapons out of anything. I mean, he fights a guy with a freaking pen. And Jason Bourne made Matt Damon into a badass. Before that, no one would have think Matt Damon could be a badass. But since then, because of that character, he has become one. He's got all the physical skills. He's intelligent. He's got all those factors. But Robert De Niro, the dude has acting chops like better than anyone probably of his time. We talked about badasses like a taxi driver in Goodfellas. With Clint Eastwood, he defined badass for like westerns. De Niro defined badass for mob movies. How many mob movies have you seen and you see characters trying to be Robert De Niro? Man, he was in Raging Bull, too. The, the, the guy could do it all. But the question is, who's the big, bigger badass? Man, I don't know who to... <laughs> Greg, why couldn't you choose for me? Uh, <laughs> wow. Man, this is tough. But when I'm thinking badass, as much as it sh- surprises me, this I'm surprising myself tonight. I thought I'd go with Bourne, but the more I think about it, the more I think the Nero is a bigger badass. The guy, is his career is going. You think he's done? You think he's over with? Just like Jake LaMotta in, in uh, Raging Bull. Then he comes up and gets another Oscar nomination, and then he's like redefining his career again. So you never count him out. And in real life, actually he talked about maybe he's a real badass in real life. In real life, he's very a timid, very uh, you know reserved guy. But you put him in a role, and he goes crazy. If he asked me who who am I more scared of, I probably would be De Niro because you never know what to expect. So with the slightest of slightest edge, Robert De Niro is moving on to the next round. I'm kind of ashamed of myself, but <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to be eating Ben and Jerry's later, just crying <laughs> into the Ben and Jerry's. As I watch Born Ultimatum. <laughs> Why? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> My wife will be like, what are you doing? Like, well, <laughs> just listen. Just listen. I'm just eating right. Cherry Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> oh cherry garcia next up on the uh on the bracket we have this will be interesting if, if this character goes to the finals because it would be a it was would be a fun final and that is dark side kind of the dc thanos which may be the oddest of oddball matchups of this entire tournament so far going up against Adrian Peterson, the running back for the for the Minnesota Vikings. Did you put them together because they're both bald? <laughs> no, it was just it was just done by random. Wow, Dark Side or Adrian Peterson? That is that is tough. But honestly, I think I'm going Adrian Peterson. For one, Woo-hoo. if Dark Side had that same injury that Adrian Peterson did when he tore his MCL, he's not coming back to run for 2,000 yards like Adrian Peterson did. Man, th- that guy is a beast. That guy, like, almost singly-handedly uh, brought his team into the playoffs. He 
you know, is a running he back. He is that the, team. He is that team. He's a running back at the age of the quarterback. He's been the best fantasy player for how many years now? He's a beast. He's a, one of the most reliable players, even when he goes out with one of the most heinous injuries I've seen. And he comes back even stronger. That's insane. Dark side, yeah, he's a badass in, in the comic book, and he is the ultimate of ultimate villains in DC. But I think Adrian Peterson would take him. I'm just saying. So I'm going <laughs> Peterson. Chuck, what say you? Who are you going with? Ooh, you know what? I think I'm going to shock everyone again, and I'm going to go Adrian Peterson. What? Wow. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the fact that Adrian Peterson... He came, like Dan said, he came back from that injury, which was grotesque, and he where came back stronger than he... this. I have, I, I, I haven't seen pictures of where it's well, grotesque. I haven't. Just what, where, how it happened? Like his knee just bent backwards in a way that a human leg is not supposed to bend. But um, to be able to come back stronger and run for two thousand yards, that's like superhuman. And I think the fact that he is an actual real person that exists and he pulled that off i think that kind of trumps the uh, fictional accomplishments of dark side so i'm gonna go peterson greg on to you going to the vikings fan are you gonna shock us and go dark dark side are you gonna go with adrian peterson this is going on all day dan all day (laughs) with ap all right (laughs) adrian peterson wins in a clean sweep wow I think he's the first sports person that's won so far. So I don't think Darkseid could tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> if he even touches him, AP is just powering right through. He could juke out his way out of those Unibeams, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I was going to say that, too. I, think, I don't even think like, Unibeams could catch him. <laughs> those calves on Adrian Peterson, man. Yeah, yeah. Going on to the next round. It's actually not getting that much easier. Well, I know for one person this is going to be an easy, easy decision. And that is Blade, Wesley Snipes, the character that kind of really brought in comic book movies in the late 90s, going up against, I guess, another sports person in a way. And that is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Chuck, I'm going to start with you here because I know you're a huge Blade fan, but who are you going with, Blade or Stone Cold? It's hard to go against Stone Cold. He's definitely a badass guy, one of the most badass wrestlers Probably put him right up there with The Rock and uh, Hulk Hogan and some of those classic wrestlers. But honestly, how can I go against Blade, one of my favorite characters? Uh, just his whole trilogy of movies just personifies badass. The, the way that Snipes played it particularly, too. I think maybe maybe if someone else had played it, maybe it would be picking Blade. But really, really pleased with the way Snipes portrayed Blade. It's just he's always a guy that's in control even when the odds are stacked against him. So I'm going Blade. All right, we got one vote, Blade. Greg, where are you going? I just want to throw a little fun fact out there from the, the Del-, Del Toro book that I'm reading. Del Toro made Blade 2 just so he can make Hellboy. I thought that was an interesting little fact. Del Toro also liked one of uh, Chuck's favorite lines from uh, the Blade franchises of, why all these motherfuckers who got to ice skate uphill? <laughs> something to that effect. Yeah, classic. Stone Cold Steve Austin is kind of your hillbilly wrestler type with his skulls, rattlesnakes, beer all over the place. Doesn't drink the right beer, though. That kind of takes away points on him. <laughs> and I believe at one point he was like, wasn't he playing some kind of, he had like blonde hair and it was like, fashion model type of wrestler type of dude yeah i used to be like i get it was like the blondes of hollywood or something like yeah, that yeah uh, so that kind of takes away points with, from, um yeah from stone cold a little bit i just gotta go with with blade he's half man half, half vampire he's got he's got the powers of a vampire which is pretty badass and he's not the sparkling kind <laughs> he's got awesome weapons He's got none of the weaknesses of an actual vampire, so I, I, I got to go with Blade. All right. So we got two votes for for Blade, and I'm not going to make it a clean sweep. I'm actually going to vote for Stone Cold. Blade, badass, no doubt, but Stone Cold Steve Austin did what so many in the world dream of, and he became famous by beating the crap out of his boss. So 
<laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, that wrestler himself had some lesser than less than stellar gimmicks, and but Stone Cold, he Steve Austin kind of became popular on his own. Like no one, it wasn't Vince McMahon lifting him up. It was him kind of taking it for himself and changing wrestling forever. Like with the Attitude Era, and I was really big in the wrestling for a great deal, and during that period in the Monday Night Roar, and he he changed wrestling into something completely different. Something that was more realistic, I guess, for wrestling in a way. But uh, yeah, Stone Cold, no doubt, the Rattlesnake, he he deserves, I think, at least a vote. So Blade's moving on, but Stone Cold is not being left behind. Moving on to the next round, and this is another one where I'm going to have to fight for my guy. Though it's going to be hard. The first one, though, is one, I think, if you don't know who this is, I I don't know what to do with you. But that is John Wayne, (laughs) Pilgrim himself. Going up against Heisenberg from Breaking Bad, Walter White himself. And John Wayne is a legend. Made more movies than I think anyone else in history. But Heisenberg, Heisenberg made Tidy Whitey's badass. Heisenberg was a teacher that took over a drug ring in, in, in New Mexico. He's got head, head to head with drug cartels in Mexico and come out on top. He's gone against the DEA. He's done pretty much all you could do all while being a teacher. Or you can just be, you know, just using his intelligence and c- cooking a math into something no one has seen before. He- Heisenberg is that anti-hero. He is the new next generation's anti-hero. And I, I got to go, I got to go with Heisenberg. John Wayne, he's a legend. He will go down as one of the biggest and best movie stars of all time. But when it comes to levels of badass them, my vote goes with Walter White. I know you guys have not seen Breaking Bad, so I have an idea where this is going, but who knows? Maybe, you know, the surprises will continue. Chuck, we'll, we'll go on to you next. Who are you voting with, Heisenberg or John Wayne? Well, I haven't I haven't seen much of Heisenberg, like you mentioned from what I have seen, like in the previews and stuff, and like the stuff you just talked about, it does sound like he's a really badass character for being kind of just a regular guy. I think he was a teacher at some point, right? Yep, he started off as a science teacher. Yeah, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Honestly, though, John Wayne for me is just one of those guys that I really see as part of that definition of badass. I think I looked up at some point he was. He would start in like 172 movies or something crazy like that. I think he, for the longest time, was just uh, just that tough guy that everyone wanted to emulate. And you make a good argument, Dan, but I, I think I'll have to go go with my guy John Wayne here. No worries, I, I can't I can't blame you. So we got one vote Heisberg, one vote John Wayne. Greg, you're again the deciding factor. Who are you going with? I was more of the deciding factor last week. I really do enjoy your your arguments, Dan, and and John Wayne does have a couple uh, dents a- against himself. His actual name is is kind of girly. I forget exactly what his his real name is supposed to be. Marion Morrison. Thank you, Chuck. I knew you would know that. <laughs> but one of the, the interesting things about John Wayne is he actually got another badass uh, Western star in there, and that would be uh, he got the role of Marshall Matt Dillon going. Um, he, he actually re- recommended the man for that job, and that TV show has gone on to be one of the longest-running TV shows in history, uh, and that's uh, Gunsmoke. And, and for that, and I kind of just convinced myself to go. I, I was going to vote Heisenberg, but then I just convinced my own self. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go for uh, John Wayne. Apparently, like you like your own arguments as well. So John Wayne is moving on. Can't blame you. It's hard to beat John Wayne. The guy is is a legend. So, all right, next up, this this again on physical stature, kind of a mismatch. But again, this is levels of badassdom. This is not who wins in a fight. So it's really anyone's game. Starting off, we have Hit Girl from Kick Ass going up against Megatron. I don't know if that was robotic enough or whatnot, but <laughs> just add a <laughs> filter on later. <laughs> uh, Prime. <laughs> so, who is the bigger badass, Hicker or Megatron? I'm going to start with this one. 
And like I said, this is bigger badasses and not who wins in a fight. And I think Hick Hickerl is a bigger badass. For one, Megatron goes against Optimus Prime. And Optimus Prime's greatest superpower is dying. The guy is just great at getting killed. Uh, <laughs> Hicker, on the other hand, she takes out the mob. She takes out people that are four or five times bigger than her. She lets her dad shoot her in the chest and gets up just to see how it feels. I mean, this girl is barely a teenager, not even a teenager, and she's already a badass. So, and if you look at the, though I, I think uh, Transformers fans will hate me for quoting looking at the movies, but if you look at the, the movies, Megatron gets tricked by whoever the Meg, uh, Megan Fox stand-in was in the third film. Some, you know, Blom swimsuit model Victoria tricks Secret Megatron. <laughs> Supermodel. Whatever. I want to go with Kick-Ass. Uh, sorry, not Kick-Ass. Hit-Girl is the bigger badass. Uh, Chuck, what say you? Who do you think is the bigger badass? Well, I think, like you said, when you look at phys physical stature, you're like, oh, that's a no-brainer, you know, Megatron, he's huge, he's badass, he's really bad, evil guy. I think when you look deeper, I think Hickerl is definitely more badass, just the, the stuff that she pulled off in the Kick-Ass movie, and I, I don't believe that I've seen the second one. I'm not sure if it's better than the first, or... It's not. About, about the same, or... I think I was really impressed with, uh, with Hickerl, and it was kind of like a... Kind of like a young female version of Batman, something like that. I don't know. Just uh, I thought she was really badass in that, so going to go with that. Greg, you making a clean sweep, or are you going with Megatron? Uh, I'm, I'm going to make it a clean sweep and uh, not really say much more, so I won't sound like an idiot. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the next round. Not okay. the next round. This is the last last matchup for the first round on this side of the bracket. And we're talking about biggest badasses. I know some people are like, wait, you got to have him on that, right? You have to have that guy. You have to have him. And he, he is the Internet's biggest badass. And that is Chuck Norris going up against. This might be the most interesting uh, matchup of <laughs> of the side. And of course, that he is fighting the most interesting man in the world. So who is the bigger badass? Ch uh, Greg, you ended last round, so we'll we'll begin with you here. Um, who are you voting with? I I, I thought you were going with a, a different internet um, sensation. I thought you were going with the uh, overly uh, attentive girlfriend or, or whatever her name is. <laughs> but but Chuck Norris is pretty freaking badass. He was instructed uh, by Bruce Lee, who is pretty badass. I believe he was on the other side of the bracket, if I remember correctly. Yes. I don't think Bruce Lee made it very far, did he? Trying to he lost in the first round. Oh, did he? I was trying to scoot over there, but my computer's being an ass. So he's got that going for him. He's got all these freaking awesome little things of when he does uh, push-ups. He doesn't push himself up. He pushes the world down. So he's got all those cool <laughs> things going on for him. But then the other guy has all these really neat things about him. He speaks French with a Russian accent. That might be a bad idea for him at this point, but uh <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's got a bunch of interesting things going on that way. But I, I think Chuck Norris has more clever sayings and even may I may I say it, uh, more interesting anecdotes about him. All right, we got one vote for Chuck Norris. Chuck, you going with Chuck or you going with the most interesting man? Whose name is also Chuck. <laughs> Listen, you got a guy named Chuck. That pretty much speaks for itself. That is very, very badass, I, I must say. I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe you guys will disagree with me, but I feel like the most interesting man in the world is kind of a wannabe Chuck Norris. Like, he, they come up with all these clever, funny sayings, and I feel like they're trying to match Chuck Norris and what he has accomplished in his career. And I just think Chuck Norris was... More the original badass, like more so than the most interesting man in the world. Even back into some of his action movies and stuff in the '80s. So gotta go with uh, gotta go with my guy Chuck here, who shares the same name as me. <laughs> and I'll make it a clean sweep. And I actually was gonna comment on that as well. Where I think the most interesting man in the world, yeah, he has his sayings, but he does seem like he is trying to steal Chuck Norris's thunder, uh, which I'm pretty sure that painting is being made as we speak of him trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
you know, Chuck Norris, even without without the sayings, without like the internet craze, he is he is a big badass in real life. Like you said, he made Lone Wolf McQuaid. I mean, come on, in Delta Force. Anyways, <laughs> that might be strikes against him, but <laughs> Chuck Norris is moving on. So we're back up top to the top of the bracket, and I got to fight for my guy again. Though I don't know if I want to. Huh, this is tough because we have Wolverine going against Jack Bauer. This is really Ooh. hard. <laughs> Wolverine, you know, adamantium skeleton, That's healing really factor. Hard. That is. <laughs> the guy's claws. I mean, the, maybe the biggest badass mutant power in the world is his claws. It's just something about it. It's something, like, intimate about him, like, tearing people apart with those claws. And he was a badass on the Saturday morning cartoon show. And he smoked. So I guess that makes him a badass. I don't know. But Jack Bauer... I think Jack Bauer is Wolverine without superpowers. He, his body can almost withstand just as much torture as that is Wolverine. Like I said, he does not quit. He saves the world. He was abducted by China, tortured, comes back, and then has to try to, in 24 hours, stop a nuclear explosion from happening. I mean, that, that to me is incredible. He, he's taken on all enemy shapes and sizes. And like I said, he he's willing to break the rules. Though Wolverine is too, and Wolverine is a samurai. And oh man, this is tough. But I'm gonna give it to Jack Bauer just because, like I said, I think he is Wolverine without superpowers. So that just gives him a slight edge in my book. Rang, what say you? You go on Wolverine. You go on Bauer. Uh, I I think I have to go Wolverine, or I'm gonna lose my membership card. <laughs> I, I like all that you said, Dan, but uh, I just think the uh, yeah, Jack Bauer is like Wolverine without the superpowers, but Wolverine is also going up against other superpowers and superpowered people and superpowered people that probably have more power and have more an advantage, but Wolvie still comes out on top, smoking his cigar. He's out in the... One of the coolest things, it, it's... I'm not sure if it really ups his badassness or not, but uh, because it from your argument of... Jack Bauer is, is has no powers, and uh, Wolverine does. But uh, Wolverine has fought a bear in the cold and won. Uh, <laughs> I just think that's a pretty freaking sweet scenario. I, I got to go Wolverine. All right, we got one, one vote Wolverine, one vote Bauer. Chucky, I guess you've really been the deciding factor for most of tonight. So who are you going with? Uh, another tough one here. Re- really make it some some convincing arguments there, Dan. I know I haven't watched twenty four at all, but uh, you know you're you're really making me want to check out Jack Bauer even more because it sounded pretty cool. I think I'm gonna have to go Wolverine though, and I'm gonna use the argument that the guy takes on hordes of Sentinels by himself, and also doesn't hesitate to attack Magneto, even though. He's someone that controls the very metal in his own skeleton. Wolverine is not afraid of him at all. He still will run at him every time and try to attack him. Tactical or not, it's it's pretty badass in my opinion. So, going with Wolverine. All right, and Wolverine is moving on. Next up, we have Frank Martin from The Transporter going up against Doctor Doom. And Chuck, you ended last round, so let's start with you here. Who are you going with? Oof, boy. These are not getting any easier on us, are they? No. Some jerk made all these brackets up. I think actually three jerks <laughs> did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they should be banned from the internet. Um, I think somebody can actually do that now. I think it's the NSA. <laughs> <laughs> well, and welcome to the NSA for listening. I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> or the FCC won't let us be. Boy, this this is tough. I'm a I'm a big Frank Martin fan. As I said last round, uh, I'm a big fan of all three of the Transporter movies. Some of my favorite action movies. Wait, Doctor Doom? Like, how do you go against Doctor Doom? I mean, the just creating the suit of armor that, honestly, on on several occasions has outdone Tony Stark. That's pretty badass in and of itself. Creating the Doom bots. Nobody nobody ever knows if it's the real Doom or not until kind of after the fact. So I think I have to go with Dr. Doom on this one. All right. Greg, who are you going with? I'm going to have to go Doom. I love Frank Martin. Well, not love, love, like that kind of way, but... um, Handsome robe. <laughs> yeah. 
Frank, he is he is awesome. He he's got his toys, but so does Doom. Doom has a, a time device he can go throughout time. He faces down gods. Frank Martin just faces down douchebags. It <laughs> just they're they're at different levels, if you ask me. I I think Doom's at a little uh, higher pedestal there. So I, I'm gonna go Doctor Doom. All right, and Doom's moving on, but I am gonna give. A vote to Frank Martin, just because he beats up a group of people with nothing more than a hose, and he fights a bunch of people covered in oil and kicks the crap out of them using pedals from a bike. So <laughs> that alone, to me, makes him into a pretty big badass in those just for those action scenes. But nevertheless, Doctor Doom is moving on to the next round. Next up, we have. The Hulk going up against Clint Eastwood. I ended last round, so I'll start here. And again, Hulk, powerful. The dude can smash tiny Clint Eastwood like without even thinking about it. But Clint Eastwood, I think, is a bigger badass. Like I said, his voice and his command of a situation, I think, is bigger than that of Hulk. Like Hulk, if you leave him alone, like nothing, nothing will happen. He, he I think. Deep down inside, I don't think Hulk wants to be a badass. I think Hulk just wants to be left alone. Deep down inside is a bigger badass when you look at Clint Eastwood. <laughs> he's a bigger badass. He's like a Russian doll of badass them. The, the more you take him apart, the you know, you're still going to have a badass there. So I'm going to go Clint Eastwood. Chuck, where are you going? I, I like that analogy, by the way. That's pretty clever. <laughs> Boy, let's see. Another tough one. I think, I think I'm going to go with Clint Eastwood. I think the fact that he's just a a real person showing showing a, a whole generation of badassness. The Hulk is is someone that kind of basically like loses his mind when he gets consumed by his rage and uh just kind of basically goes on a rampage just driven by anger, really doesn't have any control over it so to speak. I think uh Clint Eastwood has that that confidence, that calm demeanor, where he always uh, feels like he's in control. So I'm going to go with Clint Eastwood. All right. Greg, are you making a clean sweep, or are you going with the Hulk? It's not going to matter, but I, I'm going to go with the Hulk. He's my boy, and I, I think he at least deserves a vote. So Fair enough. Clint Eastwood is moving on. Next up, we have Leonidas going up against John McClane. Greg, you ended last time, so we'll start with you here. Who are you going with? It's really tough. John McClane throws out some of the greatest lines ever in the face of danger, some of the funniest crap. He's He's been in more movies. He's been used a lot more. Thing for Leonidas, though, he's got this, this epic battle. John McClane, maybe slightly less. John McClane is the one-man army, if you, if you ask me, and he actually does get the job done. So I, I'm going to go with John McClane. All right, one vote for John McClane. Chuck, what about you? Who are you going with? Yeah, I think I think I might have decided with John McClane on this one. I think Leonidas deserves some respect in his own right, but it's hard to quantify. But for me, it's just it's just sticking out to me more. John McClane. Just seems like more of a badass to me. All right, and I'll make it a clean sweep. I I agree. John McLean is a bigger badass. You know, Lee Lennis is a force. A dude is one of the best warriors of all time. But I think what makes John McLean a little bit of bigger of a badass is the fact that unlike Leonidas, who is not afraid, he is afraid, but he he recognizes fear, but he goes in anyways. While Leonidas kind of just ignores it, stamps it out, and kind of just is like a machine in a way. So. Because McLean is more of a human, I guess you'd say, I'm going to go with John McLean, at least in the first few movies, until like the fourth one when he becomes like a gigantic superhero, but <laughs> not, that's not worth standing. All right, going on to the next matchup, and these are not getting much easier. We have Han Solo fighting, or not fighting, but going up against Hellboy. Man, this is this is hard. Uh, you again, Hellboy, a demon. It's hard to get more badass than that. He's got the look. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got the powers. He's got 
the attitude, but Han Solo is is a legend. Think about the line, I love you, I know. I mean, that to me is just <laughs> one of the most badass lines in movie history. The guy is that, he, when people think about like the anti-hero, Han Solo is often on the top of that list. So I, I gotta go Han Solo. Uh, Greg, where are you going with? Well, Han Solo may be a legend, but I think Hellboy is biblical. He is supposedly the the son of the devil who is the ultimate rebel, and so Hellboy is rebelling against that ultimate rebel. So I, I think that speaks volumes. There's just m- more badassness to him. Han Solo would get my vote just because he, he's this character I love, but uh, Hellboy is a little bit more gruff, tough than Han Solo, I, I think. I don't, I don't see Han Solo ripping his own eye out. I don't see Han Solo doing quite the her- heroic things as Hellboy does. Hellboy just goes in hell or high water, no pun intended, and just does what he has to do, no no matter what the outcome. Plus, Hellboy has is as his friends are pretty freaking badass. He's got a girl that is is pretty much a pyro. She, she light on fire. He's got a fish for a friend, and he's <laughs> he's got a homunculus, a giant stone monster who. Really, his only clothing is this giant doorknob that kind of goes over his junk. <laughs> I, I just think there's more badass things uh, going on with Hellboy. I don't think Han Solo is is quite as badass, really. He's cool. I, I think the coolness factor, Han Solo may edge out Hellboy, but I, I think Hellboy is more badass. Chuck, you are again tonight's deciding factor. Han Solo or Hellboy? <laughs> reoccurring theme here you make some good points greg um, I, I i knew he wasn't going to make it past this round i knowing you too i he didn't have a chance on this round <laughs> i was surprised you made it past well, last round so we can go on to the next th- one th- <laughs> i'd like to finish though please if we could <laughs> no the uh for some reason the the thing that sticks out in my mind though for han solo he shot greedo he shot first he's the only one that shot and George Lucas was so intimidated by Han Solo that he had to go in and edit the movie so that Greedo shot at the same time. I think that's pretty pretty badass right there. That uh maybe it was controversial that they edited it, but pretty pretty badass move by Han Solo, that whole scene there. So gonna ride the Han Solo train on to the next round. Alright, Han Solo is moving on. Next up we have Robert De Niro going up against Adrian Peterson. Again, random matchup, but that's what makes it fun. Uh, Chuck, you ended last round, so I'll start you with you here. Who is the bigger badass? Who, boy, this this is tough too. Wow, I know you said like De Niro kind of is, is a little more timid in in real life, something to that effect. I know I haven't seen much of him in real life. I've pretty much only seen him in his roles. I think for some reason Adrian Peterson's just sticking out in my mind. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to take him and push him into the next round just for his uh superhuman like uh healing ability. <laughs> so, Adrian Peterson is, is certainly a beast, no doubt. But Robert De Niro, like I said, he I think he has he is timid in real life, but I think that timidness is is there because he realizes how big of a badass he is in real life. You know, he's not a big guy. He's not huge. He's not muscular. But he has a presence about him that is frightening at times when he wants it to be. Look at something like Fear, where he isn't a complete maniac or in Taxi Driver. And yeah, those are roles, but he's the one making that role what it is. So I think that that ability to be such a frightening force when you're just, you know, kind of your your average looking person I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to De Niro, on slightly, uh, but I think it might be in a losing effort. Uh, Greg, who are you going with? They're both real life people, and I think acting is is cool. He's played some badass characters, 
but I think Adrian Peterson is actually badass for coming back from such an injury, being able to do all that he can in uh, the NFL when quarterbacks are more valued at this point and kind of proving that stigma wrong a little bit, that, that running backs are as an essential part of football in, in this day and age. I, I think that's pretty badass. Plus, uh, I, I did hear that Robert, Robert De Niro is kind of uh, timid in real per, in real life, and I've, I've kind of seen that from different clips uh, where he's gotten interviewed and stuff. And I believe on, on Nerdist, they have an interview with Billy Crystal, and Billy Crystal kind of talks about his, uh, his experience with Robert De Niro when they were kind of doing an interview together. And Billy, if we uh, analyze this, and Billy Crystal's like, yeah, he he doesn't want to talk at all. He, <laughs> um, so I, I'm gonna go with uh, Adrian Peterson, not because I, I love Adrian Peterson, but I, I think it, the facts there just kind of make him the guy that that needs to move on. And Adrian Peterson is moving on. Greg, your boy's doing pretty good here. Yeah. yeah. Think about think about who he, he took down already. De Niro and Darkseid. That's Dark Side was the more impressive <laughs> one, I think, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. Crazy. Moving on to the next round. And I guess this is more of Chuck's boy with Blade going up against John Wayne. Uh, Greg, you were in the last round, so we'll start with you, you here. Who is a bigger badass, Blade or John Wayne? I don't really see anything in... John Wayne's life that has really made him a badass other than he's portraying a whole bunch of different badasses. But, but once again, he's, he's a real life person. I don't think he could get as many bad things, badass things, uh, as Blade can in, in a fictional world. But the extreme amounts of badassness of cool tools, car, his mentor is even badass. I'm going to go have to go with, uh, Blade. All right, one vote for Blade. Chuck, who are you going with, John Wayne or Blade? Ooh, this is tough. Two of my uh, two of my favorite characters, kind of really pure, really guy characters, like tough guy characters. You know what? I think I think I'm gonna surprise everybody here. I'm gonna go John Wayne. <laughs> Damn it! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm th- I'm throwing everybody for a loop here. Probably one thing about John Wayne that I seem to remember is, uh, I think from my grandfather telling me, it was some sort of difficulty that he had making the all those Western movies. I believe he was allergic to horses or something like that, or he couldn't ride horses, something like that, which you think is kind of a staple of a Western movie, and he was really able to overcome those that major obstacle and, and still do all those great movies and also I, I just think this could be way off base but i kind of get the idea that the marlboro man is like based on john wayne just that tough guy image that people want to emulate i feel like it's really based off of him that could be totally false but i'm gonna i'm gonna go with john wayne and woof, so it's down to me one blade one john wayne i am deciding factor here and I'm going to go with John Wayne. When you look up Rugged, I think it's John Wayne. During his time, he was he was the action hero of that era for such a long period. He is that American ideal of what it is to be like a hero. He is just tough, takes no prisoners, is balls to the wall all the time. Uh, he might play, play similar roles a great deal, but I think there's a certain attitude you know, I think ever since John Wayne, the world has been trying to Hollywood has been trying to you know, make more John Wayne. So, and plus, I think John Wayne has a little bit more dimension to him than than Blade does. But on a on a slight edge, I'm gonna go with Wayne, and he's moving on to the next round. So, a little bit this bracket is kind of shaping up a lot different than I expected going in. So, that's interesting. Moving on to the next matchup. We have Hit Girl from Kick-Ass going up against Chuck Norris. Uh, <laughs> I ended the last round, so I'll start with this one. I'm going to go with Hit Girl. The mouth on her alone, I think, makes her a bigger <laughs> badass. Just to what she says, I, I guess, you know, it's a novelty. It's a little cursing, but 
I think it, it just, it's just so funny, and I think the performance makes it work. Even in the comics, it was well done. And we, we talked about Michonne last week with a sword. Hit Girl is just effective with all types of weapons. And again, I think she would take on Chuck Norris, and I think she might get the upper hand, maybe. I mean, I, obviously Chuck Norris is a real person, but I'm, I'm going Hit Girl. Even with all Chuck Norris's internet memes and all that, I, I prefer I prefer Hit Girl. Chuck, where are you going? I'm going to ask something here. I'm going to ask for Greg to go first because I have no idea where I'm going on this, and I'd like to hear his argument. Well, I'm going to make it real easy on you, Chuck. I'm also going to go for Hit Girl. Uh, okay. um, Chuck Norris has like a, a whole bunch of, uh, I, I guess you would call them memes. Memes aren't actual real things. He's not actually doing all of those things. Uh, whereas his last round where it was kind of like meme versus meme, that's an easy, like, Chuck Norris has more epic memes. He has more badass memes. Um, so that was the reason he kind of passed that level. But, uh, as, as an actual just person, he's just kind of your, well, a little bit above average guy because he knows all these karate moves and everything like that. And he just kind of plays badass characters. Is he badass in his actual everyday life? I really don't think so, um, especially with him doing the, uh, what, the, what the hell was that, the name of the gym product that he, he promoted Total gym. Uh, yeah, with Christy Brinkley, um, <laughs> which was totally not badass and infomercial. So I, I'm definitely going to go, have to go with Hit Girl, who's cursing, showing no fear up against these guys that are just freaking way bigger than her, and she holds her own. So I, I'm going to go with Hit Girl. So are we saying the Sham Wow guy is not badass now? Is that I was unaware. <laughs> <laughs> Infomercials are not badass. So have you've heard Greg's argument. I guess does that make you go, Hair Girl? Or are you gonna just throw a pity vote to Chuck Norris? I think I think I am gonna go Hit Girl. Unfortunately, I kind of, kind of shamed myself because uh, he was named after me, <laughs> being Chuck. I think honestly, at the end of the day, it comes down to. He has a lot of uh, great accomplishments as far as his martial arts, things like that. And I look at I look at a show like Walker Texas Ranger, which was a very interesting show, kind of entertaining. But I think for some reason it kind of takes it down a notch, maybe a little corny. I don't get that corny feeling from Hit Girl. To like agree with a lot of Greg Greg's points, I just I don't think she really has a corny aspect to her. She's She's just pretty badass for, for a teenage girl like that. So Chuck Norris is going home. All right. Chuck Norris is out. That that might be the internet has just broken. So <laughs> well, how are we going to put this podcast up then? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe the I don't know. Maybe the most interesting man in the world can fix it. He's got nothing else to do now. All right. <laughs> back up to the top of the bracket. And things are getting it easier for us. And it starts off with this first matchup. Wolverine up against Doctor Doom. Two comic book characters Ouch. going head to head. This is this is hard one, so I'm gonna cheat and I don't know where I'm going, so Chuck, I'm gonna ask you where are you going? Chuck Norris or not Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris has taken over the bracket and he <laughs> uh, hijacked. He's it. coming back to haunt us. <laughs> Who are you going with? Wolverine or Doctor Doom? I'm gonna pass it back to you, Dent. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Four I'm the host. Hours later. You can't do that. <laughs> oh, holy freaking crap! This is tough. You have uh, two of some of the toughest characters in all of Marvel, no doubt. There, Wolverine is kind of like that John Wayne type guy. Like he strikes me as that. He's he's just a bad boy. He, he protects the innocent, but he's going to kind of do what he wants. He's not really going to be pushed around by anybody. But I, I remember Greg making a good point in an earlier round about Dr. Doom kind of mastering magic as well as being a very accomplished scientist in himself. Boy, I'm, I'm kind of kind of ashamed to, to go against Wolverine here, but that's the only argument coming to mind right now. So I'm, I think I think I'm going to go with Dr. Doom. All right, one vote, Doom. Greg, you going with your boy, or are you going with Dr. Doom? I'm going to go for Wolverine, just because he had 
metal sucked out of the pores out of his body. That's pretty freaking uh, nice. yes. And he, he survived that. Don't know, I don't remember how he did it, but he, he made it through. He's gone completely to just a feral beast and come back from that. That's pretty freaking badass. He lives out with wolves and shit. Dr. Doom's up in his hoity-toity castle, just chilling as the servants bring out his shit, um, or a Doombot, you know what I mean? Dr. Doom's got more toys and stuff, but I, I think Wolverine's a little bit rough and gruff and tough. Uh, all those uh, nice F word uh, ending in Fs. <laughs> <laughs> so we get one Wolverine, one Doctor Doom. Actually, I th- I-, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I think you guys did it last uh, last what episode. Did did. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna change my vote to Wolverine. I think. <laughs> 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 I just uh, man, I feel so wrong about it. But Greg was bringing up some good points there, and I remembered Wolverine being completely burnt to a crisp where he was he had like one like cell left on his body yeah. and he completely healed from there, that there was a cool s- that is f- sorry chuck go ahead i was just gonna say that is so freaking badass like to be just a skeleton and then just regenerate from that i'm i'm changing wolverine there, there's a, a cool scene in um the the start of uh civil war where uh, humberto ramos draws it in the wolverine comic that he that he does that that he does that, and he was just a giant silver skeleton, and that was so freaking cool. And the way Humberto Ramos yeah. drew that, I thought was pretty freaking sick, and that's how I got into Humberto Ramos, and I have a, a, a drawing of Wolverine on my wall just because of that whole thing. It was just awesome. Well, nice. Let me see if I can get you to vote the other way now, Chuck. <laughs> 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 what am I, Florida? <laughs> and the reason I'm going to Doctor Doom yeah, Wolverine. He's got. When it comes to like a matchup like this, two guys who have great resumes. So let's look at let's look at the negatives. Wolverine has a little bit of a mental instability. Like he, you know, because of his past, because of things that happened to him. Like Doctor Doom doesn't really have a weakness, really. Mostly his arrogance. You don't think Doctor Doom's fucked up in I, the head? I think he has mommy issues. Yeah, well, true. He does have he does have mommy issues, but. Dr. Doom outsmarted Galactus. He stole Silver Surfer's powers. I mean, those are people who are far and away more powerful than he is, but there's something badass about a guy who it's like, you know, you you might be the smallest person on the playground or but you go up to the biggest it's like a kindergartner going up to a senior in high school and trying to pick a fight and then winning. That to me is pretty badass. Wolverine's great at going and picking fights with bigger people and then getting the crap kicked out of them and then like in, into a cell and then regrowing. But it's like Doctor Doom wins some of those battles. And again, diplomatic immunity, so you can barely touch him. He runs his own country. And even in the comics, the country wait, runs wait, wait, is pretty... Wait. Dipl- a diplomatic immunity means he can just run away like a little girl. So that doesn't really make him badass. True, true. But he is a dictator of his own country and his country is actually run efficiently though you know the whole lack of freedom thing might be an issue for most people but i don't know something about i think dr doom's just willingness to like stare gods in the face and not blink and go against characters that eat world and just his thirst for power if you honestly had to go up against dr doom or wolverine like which one would you be more frightened to? like yeah wolverine might kick the crap out of you but doom is like iron man and batman put together so I, I think Doctor Doom's a side of bat, the, the, the little bit more of a badass, but it's it's all in vain because Wolverine is moving on. Unless you ch- change your vote, uh, Chuck. No, I'm 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 sticking because I I think uh, I still think Wolverine would try to stab Galactus with his claws. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> he's, he's an even uh, actually, bigger sentinel. <laughs> actually, uh, didn't in Secret Wars didn't he try to do something like that? I I can't like I don't remember. I could be. Well, there's something that he did that I'm saving for maybe the next round if I if I need it. I got a little tidbit in my back pocket, so All right. you, you guys might remember that. So. All right, moving on to the next matchup. We have Clint Eastwood taking on John McClane from Die Hard. Wow. Oof, I don't know where I want to go with this, and I'll start with me because I ended last round. Man. Clint Eastwood, similar to, to John Wayne, he's a legend. Like I said, he has an attitude. There's so many levels to him. But I guess I, I go towards those those badasses that 
have certain flaws, have ability to lose, like John McClane. Like he's just a dude in the bad situation that does the right thing and you know tries tries to save the day. His lines are incredible. He changed action movies forever. Think about how many action movies came after and try to be John McClane. Speed, Cliffhanger. I mean, Olympus has fallen last year. We still have movies trying to steal that John McClane magic. So, I mean, that's been a pretty badass feat to completely change a genre. So, I, with a little bit of an edge, I'm going John McClane. Chuck, where are you, where are you going? This is an awfully tough one as well. I, I, I like your arguments. John McClane being in the, the Die Hard movies and them really living up to their name because they're kind of dying hard like they're they're not going away <laughs> um, as we talked about in our uh you know sequel reboot or destroy episode i think i'm gonna have to agree with you i'm gonna give the slight edge to you john mclean uh greg you making it a sweep or are you going clint eastwood i i think i'm gonna make it a, a clean sweep because uh i, I don't want to give clint eastwood a, a pity vote i think he he's a little bit above that so i'm gonna just give uh john mclean my vote and uh just kind of move on all right bow my head in the... silence <laughs> going ahead to the next matchup han solo against man the guy who just won't die in this bracket or in football adrian peterson greg i'll start with you on this one who you going with um I'm going to go with Adrian Peterson, of course, and I'm not just going because he's my favorite because Han Solo is a favorite of mine, too, and this isn't a favorite bracket. It's a badass bracket, and uh, you always see Han Solo running around that ship. Well, Adrian Peterson is going to get there about 10 times faster than Han Solo <laughs> ever would, and, and I, I think uh, Adrian Peterson, if given a chance, could train up to get really good with the gun. Uh, he's just a powerhouse, and he he's a real life badass, whereas Han Solo is uh, a fictional badass, which kind of takes away from Han a little bit. So, uh, so I'm gonna go with Adrian Peterson. All right, Chuck, you go on Han, you go on Adrian. Oh, I've I've been riding the Adrian Peterson train for a couple of rounds now. You know what? I I like your argument from last round, Dan. Just that. Just that simple one-liner when Leia says, I love you, and he says, I know. You know, how badass is that? That he could just say that, and Leia doesn't even get mad at him. She just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he he doesn't even get the evil eye. He just expects that she's going to be okay with that and doesn't dispute it at all. I'm going to go Han Solo. This is, this is tough. This is what I'm thinking. Han Solo is one of the most charismatic characters of all time the dude is like i said he's like the anti-hero for a new generation he is so many people's favorite character but adrian peterson i think if adrian peterson wanted to be frozen in carbonite you can't freeze that guy you would dodge <laughs> it <laughs> uh I, I don't think han solo could tackle adrian peterson the, the thing too about adrian peterson that i think makes him a badass is he says he does he doesn't say yeah han solo says i, I know Adrian Peterson runs for an 80-yard touchdown. He puts all of his talking on the field in, in action. He's not one of those braggadocious characters that, like, you know, like you're uh, like a Tara Owens or something like that, though he could be. He is a team first player and a bad team. Like, there's so many reasons he could complain and leave. But the fact he's sticking with the Minnesota Vikings, I don't know. That's pretty badass to have that type of loyalty to a team when you're pretty much everything – that team has i got i gotta go ap and that injury like we've been bringing up you know bo jackson had an injury he was out you look at so many so many running backs that could not come back from something like that but that guy i i think you put uh han solo in a in running back for one play and he's done he's gonna quit but uh <laughs> uh though i don't know how great adrian peterson would be flying a ship i don't know if he knows any maneuvers <laughs> He'll just, he'll just, he doesn't speak Wookiee. He'll, he'll just get outside of the uh, the Millennium Falcon and start running. <laughs> yeah, I guess who would win, an offensive lineman or a Wookiee? I'm probably Wookiee, but I don't know. I'm going to go AP because I just I, – it, it's hard. The guy just is a machine. It, he, he is going on Adrian Peterson. And next match up, 
another real life person, well, not live, I guess, but John Wayne going up against Hit Girl from Kick Ass. Wow. I didn't expect Hit Girl to go as far as she has so far. She's beat Megatron. She's beat Chuck Norris. She's done a lot of badass things just in this tournament. Is she a bigger badass than John Wayne, though? That, I'm not sure of. I feel like if John Wayne was in a movie with Hit Girl, what would that be like? I feel, I feel it would be a lot of yelling. Uh, <laughs> but then I just feel like Hit Girl would just slice off the head of John Wayne and not blink. Hit Girl just doesn't back down to anything. And I don't know. She has... You're she trying to like, find some way to make John Wayne win. And you're just going, Hit Girl, it sounds like that. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, at the end of the day, I, I think John Wayne is a legend, but if I'm going to, like, who is a bigger badass? My, my for some reason, Hit Girl jumps in my head, so I'm going Hit Girl. I can't think of any other reason for it, really, except for the fact that she slices people. I guess, I don't know. She slices, but, uh, she dices. But I, I could be swayed with a good argument, because I'm, I'm not really, really, really in love with that choice. So, Chuck, where are you going? Do you have a good argument for John Wayne, or are you going Hit Girl? I don't know if I have terrific argument for John Wayne, but I, I think this is a favorable matchup for him. Only because I, I know his Hit Girl has a lot of uh, badass accomplishments under her belt being as young as she is, but I think we talked about people being a legend. John Wayne is an icon. Just something that people have looked up to for so, so long. The, the span of his career is so impressive. And I know I talked a lot about the Westerns in the past few rounds, but I'd like to point out his uh, his war movies and his military movies and just kind of conquering those two genres. I think that kind of takes his badassness to the next level as well. So sticking with John Wayne here. Greg, where are you going? John Wayne is just an actor to play one of these parts. Parts that he has a whole bunch of great acting roles but we're not basing it off the character he's played in those roles or basing it off the man himself and if john wayne was an actor he he would just be like a blue collar everyday worker from back in the day he he would be a a a badass average man i kind of have the thing going in my head too where i'm just like uh, like you dan where it's like okay I'm thinking badass. I'm just thinking Hit Girl more than John Wayne, the the gentleman cowboy kind of. I gotta go Hit Girl. I don't think I have a really great argument for it, but uh, I I just think she is she is more badass. Hit Girl, surprising and everybody. <laughs> Hit no, Hit Girl. Actually, you know what? The one thing that swayed me, Chuck, was when you said icon. And that's true. John Wayne is an icon. And I think Hit Girl is great, but there's a novelty aspect to her. The more I thought about it, the more I'm like, yeah, she she's great, but there is some sort of novelty that I don't know how long a character like Hit Girl would last. And yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah, we're, we're looking at the actor, not necessarily all the roles, but he's that man. <laughs> John Wayne is very much those roles that he played. Uh, he may just be a blue, blue collar guy, but I guess that's kind of what's badass about him in a world of like highfalutin Hollywood types, John Wayne reigns the supreme as just your normal everyday kind of average Joe. Something about that was just badass. So I'm changing my vote. It might be fixed. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. So we're in the final four tonight to see who's going to go up against Thanos. We have Wolverine going up against John McClane. This is this is hard. This is a one and a two. Wolverine is probably the biggest badass in Marvel. I mean, he's beaten Doctor Doom in this round so far. He's beaten Jack Bauer. I mean, but John McClane, like I said, he is that. He is like the new action hero for the '90s and the 21st century. But Wolverine is that comic book character for the '90s and the '80s. He characters change from people like Superman to people like Wolverine, and he's been the most popular character in Marvel along with Spider-Man for so long. I don't know who I want to go with. Well, let's look at wardrobe. We got John McClane with his iconic white t-shirt. 
against Wolverine and his pretty badass yellow spandex and his mutton chops. Well, Wolverine kind of wears the same clothes with uh, the wife beater kind of situation. True, true. He does change his clothes around a little bit. Hmm. You have a bald guy going against a guy who has tons of hair. <laughs> uh, geez, so what's <laughs> what's more badass? I really don't. I really don't know where I want to go. Just, I think I'm gonna go John McClane. Like I said, I just something about the fact that he's just a normal dude. You know what's gonna sell me? It is the moment in Die Hard. The moment a lot of people point to, the glass moment, the shoot the glass moment, having to run across glass with bare feet, and doing it, and just seeing him have to pick out that feet and seeing that pain. After you know, in the '80s, you had people like Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger that didn't show pain. They were they were machines. They were beefed up, but John McClane was that guy that was kind of you know willing to bleed. So because of that, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go McClane. Greg, where are you going with Wolverine or John McClane? Well, the thing with your uh, glass uh, argument is Wolverine feels that pain all the time. He he does that. That's he true. has he has the heal he has the healing factor, but he he. he does feel that pain whenever something like that happens and he gets that a lot more than uh john mcclain does um you, you you do make a good point uh the the thing with john mcclain though he beat uh clint eastwood in in the last round if i, I remember correctly and he did and they back in the day they were thinking about doing a wolverine movie and they were thinking about putting in clint eastwood as Wolverine, and John McClane just beat Clint Eastwood. So does that mean that V sub V that uh, then John McClane beats Wolverine? But if Clint Eastwood played Wolverine, would that have elevated Clint Eastwood above John McClane? I think we need to get some math equations out here and try to figure <laughs> this guy out. Get a big, uh, <laughs> big chalkboard out. I do not have a big enough degree to figure this out. <laughs> With our <laughs> degrees combined. <laughs> I think the amount of pain that, that Wolverine goes through and that he's not just a fucked up mess at the end of the day just kind of makes him slightly nudge out John McClane. All right. Uh, Chuck, today you've been the deciding factor for a lot of these matchups, and that continues now. You go in Wolverine, you go in McClane. Pressure's on. Let's see. I do well under pressure, so don't flinch. Okay. I am I am actually going to go with Wolverine on this one. And my argument is from probably close to my favorite story of all time, which is Infinity Gauntlet. And it's that moment when all the heroes are trying to take down Thanos when he already has the gauntlet. They know of his power. They know what he wields. And you have Wolverine sneaking up behind him, leaps off of a rock, and plunges his six claws right through the chest of Thanos. Really, really super badass moment. Now, obviously it doesn't kill Thanos with the power that he wields, but I think it's just a such a defining badass moment that Wolverine would just have the gall to do this to someone holding the Infinity Gauntlet. When you're reading the comic and you see it happen, you're like, whoa, that's the final stroke. That's the end game. Game over. Wolverine just won it. Turned out not to be the case because of basically the time gem being able to undo stuff. But just the fact that Wolverine did that, that sells me on Wolverine. So. All right. Good points. A lot of going on for Wolverine for next round. So who he's going to face off with in this brackets championship? Is it going to be Adrian Peterson, or is it going to be John Wayne? Chuck, we ended you with you last time. Let's start with you here. You going AP? You going JW? Well, as much as I'd like to believe John Wayne as Bruce Wayne's grandfather, I don't <laughs> think that's true. You know, th there was a certain thing I liked about John Wayne where he did uh, he did some of the Dean Martin roasts, which showed a totally other side of him, other than that like tough brooding you know, aspect. He 
he showed the ability to get up there on stage and kind of poke fun at some of his other fellow actors and really like keep that celebrity status uh, among all of the greats during that time. And I think just him covering so many bases and so many genres, it's it's just uh, it's just swaying me right now. I'm gonna have to go with um, John Wayne. Greg, you going AP? You going JW? Do I think John Wayne could do what Adrian Peterson did? Because they're 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 kind of on the same playing field of both uh, real life people. Did John Wayne have a football career, like in college or anything? Do you guys know? He might have been actually in college, but I don't know honestly. Yeah, I, I, I am not sure of that. Uh, uh, well, if if he did, he probably, if he had the chance and had the skill, would have probably uh, to go to the the big leagues. I I, I think he would have chosen that over acting, maybe. He he did actually he did actually play football for USC. Actually. Okay. I, I think the athletics take precedence uh, over um, acting and going through all that physical pain and anguish and maybe mental uh, anguish, trying to push through all that and push through all the maybe negative thoughts that sneaks into maybe every athlete's mind of, uh, will I be able to come back? Will I be able to overcome this and not trip over himself? Not literally, but a uh, trip over his own mind, messing up and and being maybe a lesser player. He didn't do that. He he overcame all that. I don't really see anything for John Wayne to to really overcome besides just kind of getting his name out there, just being lucky and getting his foot in the door. Whereas I think Adrian Peterson kind of had to work for it more. You you make a <clears throat> you make a lot of good points regarding AP. And we've we talked a lot about John John Wayne and his legacy, but I think when it's all said and done, Adrian Peterson is going to have one of the biggest legacies of this day. A running back controlling the game in today's day and age, it's you know it's kind of unheard of. Really, he's one of the he may be the last great running back that we see doing what he does. Also, it's pretty badass. I guess maybe not badass, but tr- badass in the tragic sense that in the fact that he began his football career after, you know, the death of his brother. It, it kind of seeing his brother being killed by a drunk driver is what inspired him to kind of get out there and use that pain to become an athlete and becoming like the, the, the person that he is. And like I said, it's one thing John Wayne was, he had a badass voice. He had a badass swagger walk. He, he had all that, but AP is just badass through physical motion. he, he looks like a badass. He acts like a badass. He runs like a badass. And he, he just doesn't, he just doesn't give up. There's something about that. Like so many people could have just stopped, but he, he, he keeps going. He, he is truly, uh, to me, like what you look for in sports today. You, you have so many bad influences out there, but he is one of the positive lights out there. So I think that too is pretty badass. So, it goes with a heavy heart, but I didn't expect him to go this far, but I think it's deservingly so that AP, Adrian Peterson all day, moves on to the next round. You know, for the king of fantasy to go forward in a fantasy bracket about badasses, it seems right, right? I don't know. <laughs> but Adrian Peterson is moving on in the finals. Who would have thought it would come down to this? Wolverine, yeah, expected. Going up against Adrian Peterson, who is going to face off against Thanos? Who is the bigger badass? I guess I'll, I'll start this because I ended last round. And I don't know if, if I voted for Wolverine yet. I think I might have once. I forget. But Wolverine has a healing factor as a comic book character. Adrian Peterson has a healing factor as a human being in real life. <laughs> that makes me want to <laughs> kind of go AP. So. I'm going to I'm going to go with a little bit of the upset here and go Adrian Peterson. Uh Chuck, you go on Adrian Peterson or you go on Wolverine? Uh quite frankly, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. He he is the real life Wolverine. Never seen someone come back from such an injury and, and actually 
be back to normal or even stronger. So he he has the real life healing factor that Wolverine has fictionally. So um, kind of the same argument as Dan there, but I'm gonna have to go with AP. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> though I, I could be swayed. Greg, do you have an argument for Wolverine? Or are you also going Adrian Peterson? No, I I think the fact that both of you are uh, using the same argument is just kind of establishes that as a, a really good argument. I'd like to to fight for Wolvie a little bit, but I, I I don't know what angle to really take it as. I think it just kind of has to go for that reason that you guys uh, both gave of. He kind of has a real life feeling factor. The determination level to get healthy again like that is is just another kind of stroke in his uh, cap or another feather in his cap. All right, so we do have a champion of this round. Looking at all the people in this bracket, I mean, I guess there's little. I didn't expect Gordon Ramsay or anything like that, but I must say I did not expect Adrian Peterson to meet up against Thanos to try to determine. Who is the biggest badass? Is it Thanos? Is it Adrian Peterson? Purple against uh, purple. Greg... Yeah, <laughs> purple. <laughs> uh, good point. Uh, Greg, we ended with you last round. Let's start with you here. You go on Thanos or you go on AP? Uh, well, we've we've got Thanos on the one side. Um, it's been a while since we've 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 heard some uh, points about him, but he. He went up against a whole universe of superheroes. He's dating death. He's courting death, the living embodiment of death that he's just infatuated with. And that's what makes it hard. But he's also fallen. He has died. Don't know the exact backstory, but I know that Drax killed him at at one point. He tore his heart out from from his chest, literally just tore it out. Something to consider, though, would Thanos have let that happen so that he could be with death? Maybe. Never know. Then there's an, another thing against Thanos is he does beat himself. Like, he, he's the one that takes his, rips his own uh, victory away from himself, and you don't really get that with Adrian Peterson. He's actually kind of going the opposite way he's he's taking a bad team and he's doing all he can to get them to win he's he's on an underdog team but making them pretty great and playoff potential even though maybe the rest of the team doesn't really deserve it well mostly the quarterback doesn't (laughs) deserve it he's a real life person so that does kind of bring him up in my book, at least. It sounds like from how we've discussed things, it kind of does bring up things for you guys a little bit, too. Thanos kind of has everything going for him. And I think Adrian kind of had to fight. And I think that a fighter is a little bit more badass. Thanos is more intelligent. He He's, he's just got more going for him so I, i'm gonna go with uh adrian i think and by the way <clears> I, <throat> I, I i still have uh switcher points uh here i i have not used uh oh that argument swayed me yet so <laughs> last week in the championship round versus thanos and batman i went batman and i ended up losing that argument so now with ap and thanos the question becomes, who do I go with? Do I go AP? Do I go Thanos? I, I mean, the thing we've been riding this entire time with AP was the fact that, you know, what he's accomplished on the field. You know, like I said, he is a machine. There's no doubt about that. But if you look at the fact that who did he beat to get in here? He beat Wolverine. And one of the deciding factors with, with talk with Wolverine was the fact that Wolverine stabbed Thanos and how bad, big of a badass moment that was. Well, if your biggest badass moment is, you know, not even killing Thanos, that says something. That says how big of a badass that Thanos is. He's won. Like, he literally, like we talked about, the only person that ever beats Thanos is Thanos. Which, yeah, that could that could be negative. But has anyone ever beaten Adrian Peterson? Not that I can think of. 
only, only person that's beat Adrian Peterson are the Vikings. So <laughs> <laughs> the Vikings defense. Yeah, lost yeah. and Brett Farr throwing interceptions uh, in an NFC Championship game. It, it's tough. Like I, I so see everything you're saying about Adrian Peterson, and I, I do. It's it's tough because you're looking at a fictional character against a, a dude in real life, and you're like, well, it, it's hard to compare them. But if you look at the respectable fields, Thanos has won the Super Bowl in the Marvel Universe. Adrian Peterson hasn't. Not that the Super Bowl is everything, but I think it does mean something. I don't know. It's tough, but I think just barely I'm going to go with Thanos. And Chuck, you've been surprising us all night with different choices. Are you going to surprise us again? You go in Thanos, you go in AP. Well, listen, you guys know who I'm going to pick here, right? I don't think you do because I'm throwing a wrench in here and I'm going AP. Wow. I, yeah. I'm. Hold on. I am. Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> Why do you guys always do this to me? It's like every time, every championship round, <laughs> I go Batman. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have been saving this argument. This this is kind of my my switcheroo here. I kind of built Thanos up in last week's episode and pushed him to this final. But I know I probably know Thanos better than than any of us here, and I know that he his major flaw is that he he really honestly has a glass jaw, and if there's a flaw in any of his schemes, it's that. He really isn't sure what he wants. And when he gets his victory, it's the most hollowest of victories. He's not satisfied. He's never satisfied. Whatever comes to be, it's not what he thought it would be. And he always ends up being dissatisfied. And I just think that is a huge knock against him because he wins. He does win in a way. But he also loses because he never gets what he wants because he never knows what he wants. And to me, Adrian Peterson, he knows what he wants. He worked hard for it. And let's face it, he looks better in purple. <laughs> <laughs> so Adrian Peterson so. in one night has beaten Darkseid, Thanos, Robert De Niro, Han Solo, and Wolverine. That... <laughs> That to me is it says it all. He hasn't had an easy victory in life or in this bracket. So strength the of schedule is pretty tough. Right? It too of uh, doing it on a podcast for geeks and nerds. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that to me says a lot. But gotta gotta respect the AP all day. He is a fantasy champion and he is the badass king for this year. Uh, maybe next year we'll. We'll do this again, and, and or maybe even sooner. You know, we might run out of, ide- out of ideas and want to do something again similar uh, soon. <laughs> but wow, Adrian Peterson, I huge, huge surprise. At least I did not expect that. Uh, interesting, interesting to say the least. Any thoughts? Anything you want to say before we uh, move on to the the closing out this episode? I seriously never would have thought that he would have made it to the top spot either. It's like a puny little earthling once again with a, a story of coming out of nowhere and defeating this these gods. It's like something that you would actually find in a comic book, <laughs> to be quite honest. I'm just kind of dumbfounded. I guess for me, it's more like, I mean, not to take anything away from Adrian Peterson, but for me, it's it's more of Thanos losing this because I think this whole bracket is a perfect metaphor for the character of Thanos. <laughs> He makes it all the way to the end. You think he has it won. And he loses it himself because he doesn't know what he wants. It's a completely hollow victory. So he's like the Buffalo. You know, he just gives it up and he, he walks away unhappy yet again. He's like the Buffalo Bills. Always there, but can never, can never take it away. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I know I've had a lot of fun doing this and uh, it's been interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to it. I'm really, really curious at the reaction we're going to get for this. I, <laughs> I don't know if people are get... We may lose all of our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> it's all in fun. It's all in all fun. All 20 of them. Sur- surprisingly enough, this doesn't change anything. Uh, you know, it's not going to... You know, this isn't going to be written in the history books. At least for now. Maybe one day. We are not changing to a all sports uh, podcast. 
No, I don't know that much about sports. And Just an o- opinions are a dynamic thing, you know. They're always changing, so we we could always uh, have a different winner at another point, like like Dan mentioned. So yeah, honestly, if we did this again, like even with the same people, there's a good chance Adrian Peterson wouldn't make it, or Thanos wouldn't make it to the finals, because it it is a lot of this one little thing. One says one person says one little thing, and suddenly it's like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Like with John Wayne, when I heard the word icon, I'm like, I got, gotta go with, you, know, you gotta go with that. But then some other thing, some other things pop up. So it's been good. I'm liking the fact that you know people seem so far to enjoy this, and hopefully we'll we'll have similar ideas in the future. And if you have any ideas of you know who you thought should have won, who you thought maybe should have been in this that wasn't, because that was part part of the fun was just coming up with people to put in this bracket. I think we started with 32. And then we're like, all right, we'll do a little bit more. All right, we're just going to do 64 now. So <laughs> it all worked out in the end, though. So, But before we bring this episode to close, we always like to end each episode with a letter. And Greg, you are returning with a letter for this week. So why don't you let everybody else out there know what it's about? Well, actually, it's, it's somebody uh, that listens to these podcasts, actually, that I, I'm writing a letter to. And uh, I kind of kept this... Uh, under wraps uh from you guys I, I don't think i told you guys beforehand who i'm writing to but uh is it stan lee does he listen oh he totally listens <laughs> um he's he's very pissed at us that he didn't win the bad ass bracket so he's <laughs> no longer gonna listen but but here we go dear dan i have kept this hidden from you for years but i'm madly in love with you will you have my child oh wait sorry sorry wrong letter wrong letter um <laughs> Dear Dan, the three of us in recent years have not been able to hang out as much as we like. Life has gotten kind of in our way, and so has the miles. It isn't anyone's fault. It's just, it is what it is. In our separate lives, we discovered our own little things, but you found something you like to do. You got into the art of podcasting. Not only did you get to podcast, but you got to podcast about one of your favorite subjects, movies. You didn't stop there, though. You came up with a grand idea. That idea was to start up a new podcast with your friends. You got us past the distance and took some time to get back to the old days that we we love so much. So I just wanted to thank you for that. You got the gang back together. I personally wanted to thank you for the distraction. There's been a lot of stuff that has been getting me down, and the podcast is something great and positive to focus on and get me through the week. So thanks for that. Greg. P.S. We shall see you see you and Carol soon. That Dan sounds like a good guy. It's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the biggest badass of them all. <laughs> that was very nice, Greg. I, I really do appreciate that. Though I'm not going to lie, when you first started, I thought you were talking about the other Dan. <laughs> uh, who, for those that don't know, uh, our other good friend Dan, who, very busy life. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if he listens, but maybe he does. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, <laughs> but I thought he was writing to the other Wait, Dan, who was a, another great friend of ours. Chuck and I were friends with him way back when, back in, from grade school on, really. It's been one of those things. Hopefully but, uh, we could uh, get him on one of these, one of these days. He's he's not the, the biggest a nerd like us, but uh, he he's great fun to talk to. He's a big movie buff, too. So. Yeah. And I'm, I just... Not I, necessarily comic. Mostly, yeah. mostly horse movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but in response to you, like, Greg, I do have to, I do have to thank you guys for doing this and putting this up with me. I know it's, it's time consuming, but I think it's been, been fun. And we're already 11, 11 episodes in. So because of that, we're going to marble this thing up and we're going to go back to renumbering, go back to episode one and get a new creative team. Unfortunately. <laughs> so. Did Casada come in on this? He did. He did. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the person that's going to be replacing us is Brian Michael Bendis. Damn so. it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but in all seriousness, no, the, this this has been fun so far, and I hope it's only a, a good sign for things to come. So I definitely second everything that Greg said. So very very well put, Greg. I couldn't agree more. No, if I changed right. my mind, never never mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my my mind change from the bracket. Over to now me. you want to use the switcheroo? <laughs> oh wait, I You're still have an extra one, so I change it back again. There we go. You're still good, Dan. <laughs> 
Hellboy is actually the reason for this podcast. <laughs> yes, I used all my my uh, my ch- m- mind switches to get him to win. But uh, yeah, I think that that'll do it for us for this week. It's been fun. Let us know what you think of this whole badass bracket. Do you have any ideas? And we'd love to hear your feedback. It's been great seeing it so far. There's a lot of ways to get contacts with us. You can send us emails at geekcast radio uh, feedback at geekcastradio.com. We're on Facebook. Just search Talking in Circles, CCRN, or on Twitter. Um, you can also get me on Twitter at Movie Revolt, or go to the episode post at geekcastradio.com. But we'll like to join, and thank you all for listening us to this week, and we'll be back next week, same time, same channel, for now. This has been Chuck. This has been Greg, or Adrian Peterson. And this has been Dan, just Dan. And we've been <laughs> Talking in Circles. We'll see you next week. <laughs> just Dan. I thought you were going to go for the uh, same same uh, bat channel, uh, same bat station situation. Oh, that's a good good point. Yeah. Eight P eighty. Does do the Minnesota Vikings have a fight song? Uh I I haven't actually been I think it's just that so I think it's the Viking horn or whatever that they blow after the touchdown. Uh yeah, yeah. After the touchdown. Maybe that they get I'm trying to find my crap here in the screen. Ooh, sounds messy. Yeah. And you, you know how two computers monitors. work, right? That's not how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> just a giant piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just doing a, mon- a monkey impression. I'm just throwing feces <laughs> at my screen. <laughs>